You know? Okay. Yeah, man. Fuck. I think uh, somebody just seen a... <laughs> the guys went outside right now and they seen a fucking Tesla, dog. <laughs> Burning out on the corner right here, dog. <laughs> fucking... The dude that I used to have here working, Casey, he came over here and he fucking shut the power off, bro. <laughs> that's that's crazy, <laughs> dog. Hold on, let me see. Oh, let me turn my shit on. Yeah, Casey, man. Casey's a crazy motherfucker, dog. Some some dudes, man, you just like you don't ever want to get on their uh on their wrong side. And Casey, dog, he doesn't look like a threatening dude, the dude that, that I've I've had right here. Um and but he's just he's a crafty little dude, man. You know, and, and they said that they seen Casey peeling out in the Tesla. Yeah. So he just said, Man, fuck you, lucky. <laughs> Everybody back? We back. All right. We back. No, it's not the Wi-Fi. The fucking Casey pulled up and fucking shut the power off, dog. <laughs> Crazy little motherfucker right there, dog. Man. I better make things right with him, huh? Can't be having these type of problems, bro. You know? Some fools won't fight you, homie. Nah, nah. They'll get you back another way, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to it. I apologize, brother. Um... But sometimes these things happen right here. Okay. So we were talking about in the county jail. Yeah. Are you ended up in what a riot? Yeah, yeah. What what uh, what the uh, COs there at that time? Okay, with the COs. Yeah, we ended up in a riot. And, uh, um, no, I ended up. A lot of us ended up, you know, going to the hospital. You know, head split or arms broken or whatever. You know. They came in in riot gear, and, and so, so, you know, we fought them, and, and, and that was the result of it. <laughs> it was my second month there, and, I, uh, you know, I'm 19 years old, and, and like I said, like, it almost seemed like I never got out because I was only out for two and a half months. And I remember, like, working out and being able to still do the same amount of pull-ups and push-ups and everything. Like, like I had never left YA. When I got out of YA, I was healthy as hell. You, so it's just speaking on that, you never had any uh, substance issues, like dealing with drugs or anything. So, like so, so I use here and there. I, I wouldn't consider myself that was somebody that like, like I, you know what it is? It's like I never had to go buy shit or nothing because it was always available. You know what I'm saying? The homies had it, and if I wanted to, then, then I used. And if I didn't, then I didn't. I was more like a social user. And, and 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 speaking of a social user, like so, uh, you know, it can be any type of recreational drug, methamphetamine, crack yeah, cocaine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I pretty much I tried a lot of drugs, you know. Yeah. So, so I think the first time that I was like maybe twelve, you know, trying math, you know, trying rock, yeah, yeah, and, and, and uh, you know, weed and alcohol. But um, you know, it wasn't something that I did every day because um, I remember just. Wanting to be in the right state of mind when I when I'm walking the streets, like like, I didn't want to be to the point where like, I, I'm not aware. Yeah, so you sound like you're really militant back then. No, man. so so and it's it's crazy because it's like I think for even before this, even before I was gang banging, right? Like, um, I think in, in a lot of ways I was very like aware from my age. You know, and and, and a lot of it has to do with. You know what I've seen growing up at home and those conversations with my dad, and so uh, a, a lot of it that was the uh, perception of, of, of the world, right? That's what I understood the world to be, and it was like, okay, like you like you want something, then 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 you got to fend for yourself. You got to go out and get it. I wasn't old enough to have a job, but you know, and if my parents couldn't buy it, then then I'm gonna get it. Hundred percent. Yeah, that's how it was too, bro. Yeah, always out like fuck it. I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna go take what I want. Yeah. You got it, you know, you know, Spencer. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take it, you know, and it's it sucks, but it is what it is. And so here you are, riot. I mean, how was it doing? How, how was it being in the county jail right there? What was, so, what, what so, was the so, ratio, bro? So so uh, we're giving our own units. You know, we're we're up north and we're giving our own units. Uh, you know. I grew up in the system since the age of twelve. So to me, going to the county jail is just like a luxury. 
I'm I'm in jail again. Like like okay. But I it's, know be- I, it's better. Than, I'm sorry, cutting you off, but it's better than the juvenile hall. No, yeah, so. certainly. And it's like uh, um, you know, like I'm prepared mentally. I'm prepared. Like okay, I'm not. I know I'm not gonna go anywhere. I don't like being there. I'm not gonna say that I like it because I don't. Right, but I accept the reality. Like this is my reality. Like I'm gonna have to go through this process. I go through the uh, the courts, and hopefully, I you know, I could get a you know I'm out soon in a few years. I didn't know the severity of my crimes at that time because I didn't understand until I got hit with the paperwork saying that I had four charges that carry life. Okay, and this is this time now. Yeah, going in after that uh, high speed pursuit, that yeah. shooting at that trade school. Um, and so now you, so really, so you get the paperwork and you see the severity of it, like you said, mm-hmm. and you just like, fuck, I'm fucked. And I still kind of didn't believe it. I was just like, they're going to give me life. I didn't even kill nobody. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, oh, you're going to give me life for what? Like, and on my, my mind, I'm thinking I just took somebody's car. That's all I did. I didn't know like, okay, it's kidnapping, it's robbery. And I didn't know the law meant like if you move somebody against their will, even the first a couple of feet, yeah, that's considered kidnapping. You rob a store and you have the clerk move a couple of feet, that's kidnapping for robbery. You move somebody while you're taking their car against their will, that's kidnapping for carjacking, and it carries life uh, it, when they hit you with the uh, special circumstances. I have a homie of mine that he was looking for me one day in the hood. He broke up with his chick, and he was usually one of the homies that just chilled at the crib and sold dope, you know? Mm-hmm. I won't say who it is, but, um, and we, you know, we always went there, kicked it, we got high, and, you know, he was just, uh, you know, and he, he was one of those homies that, you know, sold dope at the head, kept a relationship with his chick, his chick went to work, he had a kid, you know what I mean? You know, he was, you know, besides selling the dope, he really wasn't, you know, breaking too many fucking laws. He was yeah. just trying to survive and take care of his family, so to speak, you know? Yeah. While ruining lives, you know, I know there's the <laughs> there's other people in the chat. Well, he's also fucking ruining lives while trying to survive. <laughs> but and we get that, right? You know, but I'm just saying, in, in comparison to the homies that we are out there running the streets and running and gunning and fucking robbing and all this other shit. So, anyways, he breaks up with his chick, and my homeboy told me, he goes, "Hey, so and so's looking for you." You know, and I said, "Oh shit, okay, okay." And for some reason, he didn't find me, and so. In between him trying to find me, because he knew he knew I was out there in the streets, bro, yeah. and trying to find me, bro, he needed to get somewhere, and so he took a car, bro. Mm-hmm. And when he took the car, he moved the person. That's it. That's he all moved. Take. You moved the person, bro. Fucking whole different fucking charge, bro. Uh-huh. Life. Mm-hmm. You moved that motherfucker. Kidnap life. And that's yeah, how, and that's it's how. crazy because you imagine kidnap when you're that young, like. You take somebody, you abduct them, and you fucking tape them or some shit and tie them up, and you throw them in your trunk. And that's not the case. It's just moving somebody against their will. Against their will. Uh, And and they they have it. I don't know what it is per uh, per verbatim or whatever you call it. uh, But it's actually X amount of feet or something like that. It's a distance. And it's a very short distance. Yes, it is. It's not a mile down the street. (laughs) Like we thought. Yeah, it's it's, it's like literally feet. Yes. Which turns that carjacking into a kidnapping, which nice. consists of a life sentence. Yeah, a life sentence. And he got a life sentence for that, bro. Yeah. He got a life sentence for that. So you're looking at this paperwork and you're and you're seeing nothing but L's on it. Yeah. What, what did you initially have? Did you have a public defender? Did so yeah, I, I had always had public defenders. Actually, I think my family, uh, you know, they uh, uh, retained an attorney at first, right? And it's like, okay, the, uh, and they're expensive. They didn't have the money for it. I even remember one of my home was contributing. It's like giving my family a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. It's like, here, just help the homie out. And, uh, you know, I think that only lasted to like arraignment, which is like the first court. And then and then he, he got on because um, he wasn't going to get paid anymore. We didn't have the money. So, so then I went through uh, the time I was there, two years in that county, I went through four public defenders. I'd get one of them would get me. Um, Seemed like he was doing any, any, nothing, like really, right? Uh, he, I don't even remember like getting visited from some of these people, and uh, they really didn't care. And it's just like, and then they would have me on, uh, had me off to another one. It's almost like they consider me a lost cause. Like, okay, th- this is real. Like, this dude's gonna get life. Th- there's no point in defending him, and it's just like it's cool, you know. <sighs> It's a cold way of thinking about it, but it's it's the reality oh, of, yeah. of what it is because there's so many cases that mm-hmm. hit the 
DA's office, the public defender's office, and they just go through it. And they say your case. They look at it. They see prior. Mm-hmm. They see history, juvenile. Mm-hmm. You know, they can't. Now they can't use that as uh, can they? They could. They couldn't use your juvenile, but with the case that you caught, you know, it's obviously a reflection of how you've been living. So that could potentially put you in that pile of files of cats that are just gonna, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna go through the system, and they're gonna. Everybody's gonna eat off of that. Everybody that works in the system is gonna eat off this individual being incarcerated. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, because they need to keep X amount of people in there mm-hmm. for a lot of people to fucking survive, bro. CEOs, fucking nurses yeah. in there, fucking. So on and so forth. The, 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 the prison system is a huge industry that is sending kids, their kids, to fucking great colleges and, and giving them lives to live. So, yeah. you know, so there's got to be X amount of, uh, of, of people getting life. Yeah. I, you know, I, I probably didn't say that correctly or as thorough as probably some other people can really just like. Uh, articulate it. Um, articulate it. Thank you, brother. Um, but anyway, so you realize where you the position that you're in right now no, at, yeah. at the time yeah and, and it's the kind of like no i would say that i accepted it to to the point where i was like i can't cry about it you know what i'm saying that like i did i did this shit and it was like um i'm accept the outcome it's like you know this is the life i told and, and it's like what am i gonna do you know um i got nobody to blame i made my i make my own choices you know and, and it's like this is what i did and now I have to live with it, and and um, you know, all I could do at that point while I'm fighting my case is hope that I'm giving a date. And I remember like um, the fourth attorney like asking her like, "Hey, like, can they offer me a deal? Like, 15, 20 years? I'm 19 years old. I'm thinking like, okay, I, at least I'll come out because now I'm hearing from the homies like, hey, if you get life, you ain't never gonna get out of prison, and that's what I'm trying to avoid. Yeah, right, hundred percent. You're trying to see another day. Yeah. And it might be 20 years down the line. Yeah, and, and I was willing to accept that. Yeah. Because of the actions that you committed. No. Yeah. The crime that you committed. You know, logical, right? No. Yeah. Still have a logical sense, understanding. Yeah, that, you're, you're trying to look for the best possible scenario in that case. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Fucking on the way to sentencing, the DA fucking falls down. Cracks her head open. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Mean, anything, anything right now will help. Right now, God, you know I love you, God. You yeah. know, you know I didn't mean to do none of that shit. <laughs> it sucks to laugh about it, bro. You know what I mean? But uh, it's you know some people will anything. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so you're in these. Uh, how long did it take until they 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 handed you down that life sentence? Uh, almost two years, about twenty some months, right? And um. You know, eventually, like, I think, like, shortly after, like, my second month there, like, by the fourth month, I was already in the hole. I was single salad. I was in the hole. I spent 20 months there on my own, right? And I'm going to trial. Uh, I'm going to court from right there. And, uh, you know, I go to trial, and I remember right before trial, the DA approaching us, and it's like, it's your birthday. It was my birthday, right? And, and he's like, we're going to offer you a deal. And uh, if you take, uh, if you plead to a, a one charge, and which carries life, and two robberies, like, that's your deal. And we won't have to go to trial. And my mom, I'm like, like, fuck you. You know, uh, life is life. You're not ever going to get out. Uh, get out. And I'm not ag- agreeing to that. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to work for that. I'm not going to just hand you my life. Why? So, of course, I said no. And then I remember my de- the, the public defender at that time even trying to convince me to take it. She, and her saying, like, well, if you get one life sentence, that's better than getting four. And, um, and I'm like, life is life. You're never going to get out, you know? So, so we took it to trial. Took it to trial. And- yeah. And, 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 and I was convicted, right? That, um, the, both the victims came that were in the car, testified against me. Um, you know, the, the officers that are involved in the pursuit, you know, I had my family there. They had their family there. I was found guilty, like, you know, a week and a half into the trial or whatever. It was an easy case for them. Whatever happened to the little homie? So he ended up getting uh, caught up eventually. Like, they didn't know who the hell he was, really, right? So he, they get a description of him um, through the witnesses. Like I said, this happened in broad daylight. They're, like, describing his tattoo. My homeboy was tatted up at the time. He's got his neck tattooed. Um, they thought he was a lot older. So they contact, you know, the, the sheriff's department down there that works my area, the gang unit. And they're like, hey, this guy's from your gang, Do you, uh, from that area, right? Do you happen to know? If you guys have somebody that fits the description, it could be possibly somewhere from down there. 
So at that time, the little homie, I think the first time he was arrested, like 11, 12, he, none of his pictures had his tattoos on his neck. So he was able to get by for some time. About a year or two later, they raid like three of my homeboys' houses. They get photo albums, and there he is in the picture with the tattoos. <laughs> right? So now they contact the, the agency up north, and they're like, hey, there's there's a, a, a possibility that we might have somebody that fits that description. Let, let, let us send you these pictures. And they put them in a six-pack lineup. And, yeah, the witnesses identify them. They think, you know, whether they identify them on their own will, the cops told them, like, hey, pick this guy. I don't know. Right? But the fact is, is that they said that he 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 looks very similar to the person that committed that crime. And at that time, he was in juvenile hall. You know, and they told him, hey, um, the, the detectives from up north say, hey, uh, they come visit him down south. And they're like, we're going to take you up north because there's a case pending and um, you're a suspect in that case. So now he turns, he goes to juvenile hall up north. Eventually, he turns 18. Um, you know, the case I was fighting for, uh, for the carjacking, I end up getting life. I get 14 to life, right? I get seven to life for each person. They convict me. Um, they bound me up. Actually, I went upstate. I went to High Desert, right? I go to reception. I go to High Desert first. And about a year and a half later or so, they bring me back down from High Desert. And I go see my homie in the county jail. And we're both fighting now the shooting case. Mm. So they never hit you with that shooting case? No, because like I said, it happened in two different jurisdictions, right? So they tried me first for that carjacking, gave me life. And now they bound me over to the other county. And they brought me back down from, from state after I already... Went up there, got a number, came back down, and now they're trying to try me for the shooting now. And so, what is what is your thought process during this time with already a life sentence? I mean, what did they what did they give you for the carjacking? What, what they life? gave me fourteen to life at that moment. Fourteen to life. Yeah. Okay, so now you're fighting. You now you're fighting this case. You see the little homie. You're reunited reunited with the little homie. I mean, were you able to conversate? Yeah, we end up being in the same pod. So so I see the little homie, and this is it's crazy because. Um, you know, we share the same name, Eddie, right? And so I, I had a, you know, I still do. I have a lot of love for the homie. And so in, in a lot of ways, he reminded me because he started coming around at a very young age as well, right? So now we're in the county. And, um, you know, aside from this case going on, you know, his mom passes away while we're in there. Wow. And his girl's pregnant. You know, he, she's about to have his baby. And we're facing that. Three counts, which all carry life, attempted murder, plus the whatever enhancements is, and that they want to throw on that, that carries life as well, right? So in my mind, I'm like thinking like, I'm strategizing like, okay, if I can take the rap, I already got life. It doesn't matter. We're trying to make sure that you don't get life as well, right? So um, by this time, because like I said, I spent two years in that first county finding that carjacking case. When I arrive at that second county, now, which is San Mateo between San Francisco and San Jose, right? In Redwood City. I'm in that county jail. I'm fighting this case. Um, you know, it's already been two years. They're having trouble contacting witnesses, right? I ended up getting in trouble, and I end up in the hall again. You know, I end up single cell again. And in, in the end, this worked out for me because I end up being neighbors with the dudes that were uh, homeboys of the dudes that got shot. And you were able to haul at him, huh? Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to present that paperwork, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so they asked me straight up, like, hey, one, one day it just came up in conversation. Like, so in, in, that, in that hole, you're let out one at a time, right, for day room. But, you, you know, out of courtesy, you go to doors and you're like, hey, you need anything? Well, I'm out here, you know what I'm saying? And, and likewise, when they're out there, they stop by the door, hey, you need anything? And uh, as the time went by, you know, they got comfortable enough to ask me, like, hey, what are you here for? That's all for a shooting for uh, on one of your guys' homies and shit. And so they asked me, like, oh, who is it? Like, And then they're like, oh, yeah, we know who that is. And and, and, and um, pretty much just said, like, don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. So so that was the situation, and that's, it worked I, out. I mean, that's pretty G right there. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was. And no, yeah. And, and you're talking about Nortenos, too, No, right? yeah. And there was actually one that had made a statement at first. And they were like, we actually know this dude, man. He's real close to us. Don't trip. And, uh, you know, one, one, one other guy, he got brought down from Pelican Bay. He was validated. And uh, he refused to even step in the courtroom. Right? So so, so it, it worked out in our favor. In the end, time passed. I think we we're already like three years into the case. And they're like, you know what? Um, wow. How about three, this? Three years in the case? I mean, three years later after the actual okay, crime, right? Because I did two over here. I'm about a, a year and a half in or so in this county. And they're like, um, 
you know what? They don't have a good case. Uh, you know, like originally so many people seen it in the daytime and uh, the own victims aren't trying to cooperate. Right. So now they, they come at us with a deal and they tell me like, OK, on top of your license, will you take assault with a deadly weapon, um, which carries, I think, like six years or whatever and a strike? I'm like, yeah. And my, and my homie, they're like, hey, will you take a, a assault with a deadly weapon? I think it was like 12, 13 years or so with a strike. They doubled his up. Right. Cool. We got he's got a date. Um, that six years don't mean nothing to me. Well, you know, at that time, because I'm like, I got life. It doesn't matter. You got a hundred years at that time. It doesn't mean anything to me. So uh, it, I think it, it worked out because at the end we got, you know, what we wanted. It's like, you know what? We're trying to avoid both of us getting life at that time. Absolutely. And, 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 and most importantly, it seems like, you know, you were already in your situation and, uh, it was. It is safe to say that at this point in time, you're kind of just trying to protect the little homie a little bit, right? Oh yeah, I, I, and like I said, that was our, that was our main goal. Like, like, can we avoid both of us ending up in the same situation? You know what I'm saying? There's no point in both of us going down, you know, and, and, and getting stretched out and having life. You know, especially him. Like I said, like that, he was 15 at that time. And he by the time he went to court, he might have been barely 18. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So you got you get the six years. He gets the twelve years. Yes, with a strike. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you, you you, go. They send you back upstate. They send you back upstate to uh, uh, high desert. High desert. Uh -huh. I've been I've been in Susanville twice. You know. Uh -huh. You know, it's uh, compared to high desert, it might be considered fucking uh, uh, camp, Candyland. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. But anyways. Um, I'm familiar with the areas. All I'm saying, you know, no, yeah, I hate that bus ride, bro. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, it's long, <laughs> especially, especially from Delano, bro. Fuck, man, that sh bus ride sucks balls. I've been there twice. Uh, anyways, once on the camp program, and then once on the other time on the, on the three yard, whatever, and then from the three yard, I went to the four yard, Calipat, whatever. Yeah. But anyways, um, so you go back to High Desert, and how? And so now you're you can kind of like. You can kind of you can kind of like get back to doing your life sentence. Oh yeah, and, and it's like um, you know I'm just taking one day at a time. Like I, I realize my situation. Like I'm gonna be here for a long time. No, um, I'm not thinking about the streets. I'm not thinking about like having a girlfriend or a relationship. Like that's something that wasn't on my mind. Like my my main priority at that time is like. Um, I'm trying to adjust to like and come to terms with the fact that this is gonna be my home now, right? How and, was that? How was that? And, and and you know what? Like I said, I grew up in the system, and, and so like being around homies in there, and then coming across other homies that were in the same situation as me that had life that were also young, it kind of made it more bearable. And it's like, you know what? This is the situation then. Uh, now I'm not gonna give it too much thought. I'm I'm just gonna. Uh, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to survive, right? And that's it, and, and take it by, uh, day by day. So how was it? How was it uh, transitioning? Transitioning uh, from I hate using the word transitioning because it's only used in <laughs> one way nowadays, bro. <laughs> but how? Yeah, how was it like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, bro! The the, the verbiage nowadays, yeah. bro. Is, is just <laughs> Let's say adapting. Adapting, yes, yes. Thank you, sir. <laughs> And I, I love your energy, brother. I feel like you're feeling good. You're comfortable, bro. You know what I mean? No, I am. Yeah. And, and, and I feel like I'm amongst family. That's why. Absolutely, brother. So, I mean, you so you experienced all the juvenile hall shit. You know what I mean? The CYA, all that mm -hmm. shit, you know? And so now, you know, they call it the, you know, kind of big leagues. And you're in high desert. High desert is, is not no motherfucking, is not no low budget prison. You know what I mean? In regards to uh, when it comes amongst the fellas and we talking about where you've been at and where you've done time. You say high desert. You're like, all right, cool, dog. You were up there with... With a lot oh, yeah. of the big dogs, the hitters right there, you know? So, how, how was your time right there? Uh, uh, before I get into that, right, I'm going to say this. Like, I remember being in, in, in reception, even in the county. Yeah. And, like, some of the prisons that were most talked about as far as, like, being violent and stuff was High Desert and Salinas Valley. And I ended up in both eventually, right? But I was just like, I'm young, and it's like, I don't think I'm bad. I'll tell you that. Like, like ain't nobody uh, that bad. And you're going to be humbled in prison, 100%. especially on a level four, right? On a 180. And so I never had that mentality where, like, I know it all or I'm some badass. Like, no. Like, I'm just like every other homie here. You know what I'm saying? But I'm here. And if anything's needed, then I'm here, right? So I go over there, but 
you know, one thing that I was always advised, like, like, advice, like, always be open minded, like, like, listen, you know what I'm saying? So I roll up and, 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 you know, the homies embrace you and, uh, you know, they, they, they try to school you, right? They, they, they do school you. They're grooming you. And a lot of times it's like, you know, what we say is like, you know, you see potential in somebody, you know, and you see certain characteristics about somebody. It's like, let me bring them over here and, and we're going to teach them. You know what I'm saying? We're going to teach them what's up. And uh, they figure you're going to be here anyways. And and I understand that because at a certain point I became that older person that's embracing younger homies and grooming them. You know what I'm saying? For that, for our life in there. I would say, I would say my experience with do, uh, being on yards with lifers is lifers will see cats with dates and, and you know, they look at them differently, bro. They, you no, just, yeah. you just, no. you're, go ahead. No. And, and, and I understand that you're because speaking from a no, lifer, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cause it's almost like, I don't want to fuck with you. You're going home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, and we, you know what I'm saying to you, this, you're just passing through. This is our home. Right, passing and, through exactly, and, and so, but one thing about like level fours is that most people are life lifers. And I remember like just one time, like thinking like I'm my door looking out and thinking oh the homie right there lives right there and the homie right there lives, and I asked myself like how many of us are lifers or outlaw? We got life without right, and and thinking it's like, damn, more, more than half of us have life in here. You know what I'm saying? So you don't feel too bad when everybody is in the same situation. You know, it, it makes it more easier to accept. I'm not even easier, but it's like you come to terms with it like, okay, you're not the only one. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm not going to cry about it. And you try to maintain a positive attitude when you go and make light of things and joke around and bullshit, you know? And that's the only way that you could get, de- uh, get, get by day by day. Absolutely. Yeah. Keeping your... Uh you got to have a sense of humor. Keeping your spirit up. No, yeah. You have to. And you can't allow that environment or break you no no uh because it, it, it can easily happen and no, yeah and it's and it's and it's really it's it's the environment breaking you but it's really what's going on in between your ears those those those, those thoughts those, that anxiety those voices right yep. you know which we all have we're fucking we're human bro exactly like you're in a situation like that and I, you know i i can just I can speak from just a little time that I've done, you mm-hmm. know, but can you, uh, you know, and we all like, fuck, man. And then you see the lifers around you and you're shitting like you, you, you reflect and you think like, damn, imagine what they really going through, you know? And then we were talking, I was talking about how lifers like, and you said it, bro, they look at dudes with dates. They just passing through, you know, and they're there. That's their home, bro. Yeah. That's their fucking home. And, 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 you know, they may not, like you said, they may not want to fuck with ca- too many cats that are just passing through, you know, unless, unless they need something from you. No, yeah, and you know what? I was friends with, and I had close, uh, 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 you know, I built bonds with homies that had dates, but it was like on those yards, it's like rare. Like it's most of the homies aren't going home, and even some that are are behaving like they aren't going home anyways because everybody has the same mindset. So it's kind of like, you know, it, it, it's all good. We're, we're all on the same level. You know what I like the way I like that you said that, bro. Because you could see some homies that they'll be on the yards, and you you think they got a life sentence too. Oh right? yeah, well, <laughs> buck wild, not raising one hand, they raising two hands. You know, hey, you know, but that's a, that's just being a part of the program and understanding. Hey, this is what it is right now. Oh, yeah. There's some cats that go in there with that mentality, like, hey, you know, this this is what it is, and whatever it is is, you know putting one foot in front of the other and we just going to make it happen. You know, yeah. it is what it is. So, I mean, how did you, you, you did 22 years in there off a of 14 to life sentence. I mean, when you're, when you're sentenced to a 14 to life sentence, um, is it, uh, after 14 years, you can start seeing the parole board. So yes, that's what it, that's what it means is it means you're eligible. Right. And like I went in, I remember like, uh, meeting homies that were down on a, a five of life is like an old sentence. Like, I don't even think they do those anymore, right? And But they had seven of lives. And being down 30 years on those seven of lives, right? Three strikers, right? Um, Anybody that had life, it meant that you were never going to go home. And that was the message. Like, the homies would approach you like, okay, we're here all day. You got all day. You ain't going nowhere. Get comfortable. And this is this is where this is where we're going to die. That's it, bro. That, that's good, man. That's got to be, and I've been on yards where mm-hmm. I've, lifers have died on the yards, bro. Yeah. Lifers have died like old men. They passed away. He had a heart attack, you know. Oh, what, hey, what happened to OG that was over there? 
That dude fell out. They took him to the infirmary. He ain't coming back. Like, mm-hmm. that is a fucking cold reality that someone at your age so young that has to kind of, like, entertain, kind of, like, embrace. Like, hey, I can die in this bitch. Oh, yeah. And yeah. and that's got, that's got to be hard on the mental, bro. No, it, it is. And it's like, you know what? It's like, um, you know, I told myself, like, I may die in here, but I'm still going to, like, you know, be the best that I can. I'm going to be the best person, the best version of me every day. And like, you, I'm not going to let it, like, deter me or, or, or stop me from, from being my best or break me. And, the, and then you have other solid homies around you. No, exactly. That, 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 that uplift you, and they waking up like. like yeah, and, like, and I see those homies that are, like, 60, my grandfather's age, not complaining because they come from a generation that doesn't complain. You know, for reals, <laughs> yeah. like their generation does not complain about shit. And I'm here, I am a 20 something year old. I'm like, I'm definitely not gonna complain. If they're here with us in the same situation, like I can't complain. And they've been around and they've been doing time your exactly. entire life. Decades already. Yeah, your entire and, life. And I just started, so like I got no room to, to even complain about anything. It's like, we knew what we were doing. You know what I'm saying? So so it's just like, this is what it is. And until it changes, like, this is our reality. Well, the, the, those solid OG homies that that are in on these yards to this date, shout out to you motherfuckers oh, yeah. for being so strong and being so solid and laying the foundation for young dudes that made a fucking bad mistake, you know? Made a bad mistake and came in there. They lay the foundation of just like, hey, bro, we good, homie. This is what it is, and we're going to make this the best life in here. Sometimes it's hard for motherfuckers, some of you motherfuckers, to really just rationalize that or just really sink that in that, like, hey, you know what? These dudes wake up happy. No, you're right. They <laughs> early up early as fuck with a cup of motherfucking coffee. Yep. Hey, when I was there, They're not homie. bitter. Yeah, yeah, they ain't bitter or nothing. They mm-hmm. chilling, they cruising, they talking shit. Yeah, and, the, and, the, and that's the example, and, and you see that, and it's like, you know, I can't even complain. You know, they've been doing it for this long. They could do it. Like, like I got no room to complain. And, and it's just like, this is what it is. And, you know, I'm going to keep my mouth shut and, and not complain about this shit. Like, we know what the hell we're doing. 22 years. 22 years. I mean, how, how are you running your program in there? How did you start running your program in there? When did you get into the middle uh-huh. of 22 years until the end like it was, was what was the change so i went I, I think in total i went to like seven eight prisons uh, um you know high desert uh corker shoe kern valley to hatch shoe salinas valley and i ended up in uh, lancaster the last place i was at right so uh, i did 18 on level fours you know the remaining years i did on, on a level three right so um you know uh two shoe terms uh all, all prisons I went to had sick except uh, one of them, right? So, and, and it was like, it, it's a, it's kind of different. Like nowadays, I think back then, like our generations were like, um, it was expected that at some point you like you're gonna go, you're gonna take a trip to the back, you're gonna go to the shoe. That was just the norm, and that was a revolving door for us, and, and, and that's it. And they didn't have this the R on the CDCR, and they didn't care about providing this program, especially on 180s, like. You're constantly on lockdowns. There is no um, programs to rehabilitate yourself or none of that. So um, it's like it's just nothing but like a destruction, and, and, and you know, chaos. Yeah. How do you feel about how do you feel about homies that grew up just like you, mm-hmm. same mentality, got a, got a, got caught up in the same predicament as you, bro? Because you're not the first, and you ain't gonna no, be the no, last, no, unfortunately. Uh, but as soon as they get to that point. They, they bam, hey, homie, that's it. I'm going Christian. How do you feel about dudes like that? So, you know what? I, I because think, you, kept your, head up, no, you yeah. kept your head up high and you stayed strong. No, yeah, and you know what? Like, I think a younger me would have been like, fuck this fool, he's weak, right? Yeah. And, and I think as a, as, as a person, uh, when you mature, you're like, you know what? That's none of my business. If the dude, I, I, I mean, I certainly, I'm not going to make that choice, right? I'm not okay with that, but that's not my life. You live with that. If that's your choice, and like, who am I to tell you? Like, that's your choice. But it's 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 uh, once you do that, there is no coming back and forth, and especially on those kind of yards, right? But I'll tell you this: it's now remember, like in Salinas Valley, being there, like on C yard, right, the one eighty, and like, oh, uh, I think like a, like I went for about a year, year and a half, two years. And I never seen one homie go to church. 
like to the services, like uh, nothing, all right? Yeah, you're like, dang, uh, yeah. nobody praying around and, this and, bitch. And, 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 I, and I was kind of like, good. I don't. And I remember uh, being in my building, like I don't want no fucking Christians in, in my block, right? Because they're 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 viewed as uh, weak or like that's an excuse to, to not get involved. And and I'm gonna tell you too, like at that time, like it was rare to see anybody that said that. Now I'm not saying that nobody had uh, any type of religion or faith or anything. But you did that in your private life. When you're in your cell, you want to read the Bible, that's fine. But you don't come out and proclaim like, hey, I'm a Christian. And put that title on you and say, hey, uh, and that's my way of not getting involved in anything. Like, you just don't do that. Right? It, it's more respectable if somebody is like, yeah, I'm, I'm with the homies. And uh, um, this is the situation. I'm here. And uh, you know what? If I want to read the Bible or pray in my own time, that's fine. But once you step out that cell, you, you're in prison. Hey, I want to I want to share this story with you guys, uh-huh. and this just happened the other day. I, I went to uh, Bozo invited me to to go to his studio, and he wanted me to say something in the beginning of one of his songs. And when I pulled up to his studio, this was just like the, a couple days ago. I pulled up to Bozo's studio, and when I pull up, there's a homie Lonely right there. Mm-hmm. He's he's a life ex lifer that was been on this podcast. Shout out to my boy Lonely. You guys know who he is right here. Lonely from where? Uh, 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 Sun Valley, bro. Sun I, Sun I Valley. Know Lonely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lonely Lonely was on the on the on the podcast too. So Lonely. Lonely was there because Bozo wanted Lonely to say something too, like something inspirational. We both yeah. had different things that he wanted me to talk about a wolf. He wanted homie to say something <laughs> inspirational. Okay, cool. We got you. You know, Bozo the homie, dog. I love that dude. You know what I mean? Even though everybody hates him, but you know, I love him because I got a different relationship with him. But um, and so it was funny because he said, he goes, hey, look, you know, OG from so-and-so from whoop de whoop whoop that was on the podcast. I said, yeah, that's a homie right there, dog. He goes, he goes, hey, fool, that fool's crazy, fool. That fool's a nut. So when the homie, he was an ex-lifer too. Yeah. And before he, and I ain't going to say his name, but he says, hey, when that fool would be in church, when he started going to church, he said that the homie, would, the OG homie would go in there and be like, hey, just check it out. I just want to let you guys know, man, you know, like I'm faulty. I'm mm. faulty, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, I, and I can still fuck up. Yeah. You know what I mean, and I can still stab one of you motherfuckers. No, yeah. <laughs> the OG homie, dog. Yeah. The only was telling me he's like, "Hey, homie, he go that fool crazy." And and when I have that OG homie on here, and I've had him a couple times, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm like he's a real serious dude. Like, what's up, Lucky? Hey, Lucky, I love everything you're doing right here, dog. Blah, 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 blah. And it's still to this day, dog. He's an old man that I ain't trying to fuck with, dog. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I, I'm glad that I have him on my side. I'm glad that he's doing great and he's not doing. But but it was funny that he would say, "Hey, when he was started trying and he started going to church and he started chiming in." He would let the whole congregation know, you know, that, hey, you know, I'm still human. I'm still faulty. No, yeah. <laughs> and, and I think somebody that expresses that, like, the homies are, are, are going to accept that a little more. Like, um, you know, uh, 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 it, it's it's like it's frowned upon, bro, because it, it's like anybody that chooses to, uh, it, it's almost like you're hiding behind that, you know? It's like all of a sudden, and now you now you come to prison, and, and it's like you want you want to say that you're this and stuff, right? But it's like, and, and like, don't get me wrong, I don't judge anybody for it if, if that's what they feel is best for them in their life. Like, I, it's it's fine, you know what I'm saying? I've read the Bible before. I used to get mail from my grandparents for both of them and, and tell them like, hey, would you read this verse? And, and I did it because they asked me to, right? But um, you know, I wasn't like confused about who I was and what I was and, and, and what I'm going to be doing while I'm in there and the reality of my situation. Well, let's look at it on the flip side. Let's huh. look at it on the flip side. So some people mm-hmm. are made different, right? Yeah. And some people, maybe some people don't have the support, the family, right? And they need something to lean on Yeah. during this trying time, you know? And I ain't going to lie, bro. Every, every time I've been busted, bro, uh, you know, and I, I seen you motherfuckers said, oh, Lucky ain't never done no real fucking time. He's a sissy. Yes, I am, bro. All right. And I've been blessed not to have to do that, bro. But I, I, I got I got a J number. I got a T number and violations on top of that five times in the penitentiary. Right. And then I mm-hmm. went to Arizona and I caught a number out there because I partied too hard one night and ended up in ADC dog for two years. Whatever, dog. But mm-hmm. what I want what I want what I want to say is I want to say this. I want to say this. <laughs> Forgot what I wanted to say. Um, fuck about people that uh, you know that are religious. Oh or no! So every time that mm-hmm. I have been in a situation like that, um, bro, I pray, bro. No, and I think most I of pray. us will. Like, 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 like at that moment, like I think most most of us will. Is like, you know, 
you know, a lot of, especially being Mexican, right? It, it's culture. Like you're brought up going to church, whether you're Catholic or Christian, right? Yeah. Like your family. So, so for me, it was my grandparents, right? My mom. And so, um, you know, you carry that with you, but I, I was not, um, you know, I was very aware, like, okay, like, in my private life, if I choose to do this, that's cool, but I'm not going to come out and tell the homies I'm Christian because I'm not. You know, I I might believe in God, but it's like, yeah, um, the reality is this. Until that changes, like, you know, it, 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 I looked at it like this. It, it, it's like I stayed away from certain things, I, and, 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 I, and I clung to certain things if they were going to help me out in the lifestyle. Like, it's like I'm in prison for life. If it ain't gonna help me in this life, then um I can't entertain it. Ooh. You know, uh, no, no, I'm saying like like in general, anything. Uh, no, 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 I feel that. I feel yeah. that. Yeah, I feel that. So at this point in time, spirituality is out the door. No, bro. And, and no, no, I'm gonna tell you this. Like because in my own private life, because God ain't gonna save you from this dude running down the theater with a fucking fiero well, in his hand. Well, well, yeah, and it's, God, it's like, like, where you like, at? No, and I believe in God, but it's just like um at the same time, it's like I don't practice religion. I, I wasn't practicing religion, and I was like, you know what, um. Uh, I believe in God, but uh, the reality is, like, I, I, I'm taking matters into my own hand. If I need to have a strap on me in there, then that's what I'm going to have. If uh, whatever is necessary to preserve my own life, then that's what I'm going to do. Still in survival mode. No, yeah, it, it, always. Always. Because once, be. once, you, once you let that guard down in a situation like that, you can potentially be preyed upon. No, and, and, and it's like this, like, 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 um, you know what? And, and uh, I tell people like I, when I would talk to younger homies, like there's a time and place for everything. Like we don't have to act like you're bad, especially on those yards. Like you're gonna be humbled. There ain't nobody that bad, right? Yeah. So um, you know, I tell them there's a time and place for everything. Like 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 uh, you know uh, <laughs> yeah, you're in survival mode, and, and it's like when it when it comes down to it, you could take care of business. Other than that, like just kick back, you know, and, and no, but pay attention always. It's, is that you cannot let your guard down. You can't because you see uh, violence all around. Especially when I went into prison, right? Uh, you see, you see violence, and it's like, uh, you know, that could easily be me one day or whatever, right? So I never wished anything bad about it uh, upon anybody. I never laughed at anybody when something took place. You know, I, I looked at it like it, 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 it's business and it's a cold world, but this is the world we live in. Um, and and that's it. That that was it. You know. And and, and if it comes my way, then and then I'm gonna do what I gotta do. Absolutely. And the, and the, it's always good to be in good standings amongst the fellas on oh, yeah. the yard, because, you know, I see cats sometimes too, bro. That fucking, and we ain't gotta talk about no specifics or anything like that. But in general, like, <laughs> dude, they run a dope dead up, homie. Like, man, how many times you see a motherfucker get, you know what I mean? Like, and, and, and I would say like, over some shit like that, bro. I would say the majority of, of, of the violence in there is beside, behind something like that, you know? 100%. Dope oh. deaths, baby. Yeah. Doing scandalous you know, ass movies. No, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get some. You better uh, follow through and keep your word and, and pay your debts. It's easy to be a crackhead on the streets. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in the, inside yeah. that concrete jungle, there ain't too far you can be running. No. no. <laughs> you know, unless it's towards a CO. CO? You know, uh, yeah. Man? And you see that too, uh, yeah. you're like, damn, I never thought I'd see that motherfucker running for the CO. Uh, you know what I mean? You see them two young motherfucking wolves trying to uh, chase that fool down, you know what I mean? With fucking. Crush is bigger than them, dog. You know, and it, it's like, damn, that you know, uh, it, it's it's guys, it's exciting in there. There's there's times in there where shit will happen in the day room, fools be locked up, and shit pop off in that day room. And I've been in, I've been in blocks, bro, where the whole day room would erupt. Boom, 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 boom. Get that motherfucker! Blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Wow. Like, bro, like it's a fucking. It, it, it it's like fucking gladiator shit, dog. Mm -hmm. You know, like the movie, bro. Like. I remember being in, in, in a chow hall when it kicks off and it's like the doors are shut and, and, and then the the, the uh, tear gas being shot everywhere. And it's like, it, it can't, when it's on the yard, like the wind blows it in a certain direction. Oh, I hate that. But when you're in the, in, in, in the chow hall and it's, and it's closed and it's chaos and it's like, damn, you know? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a different experience. Yeah. And you, and you know the rule about not getting down. <laughs> no, 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 exactly. <laughs> you know, yep. I've, I've been, I've had, I've, I've been, man, I was in a child one time scrapping with some fool and uh, it, it turned out to be a one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, 
I just remember the hooters were just, I just felt them billy clubs hitting me, bro. But it didn't stop me from fucking swinging, my G. Oh, yeah. You know? And then that's just like, you know, you, you wait. Are you done, homie? We're both getting pounded by motherfucking billy clubs, dog, you know? Well, and it's usually something that shouldn't be happening amongst the fellas, but sometimes it does. Yeah. <laughs> um, unfortunately. Um, and it's frowned upon big time, dog. But anyway, shit happens, you know? Wild, these fucking wild animals, you know? And I've been in those situations, dog. And, um, you know, in a lot of other situations, riots. And it's it's really like, as a young as a young kid, it's fucking like adrenaline. It's a whole new drug, bro. Mm -hmm. it's, and especially when you're in the middle, uh, the middle of this, the chaos. You know, it's 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 like kind of like what you live for. It's this is what it is. This no, is what I signed up for. And no, yeah, I'm that dude. No, you're right. When you're young, you're just like looking for an excuse to like fuck somebody up, right? Um, it does. It, it, it happens, you know. And I and I and I think when maturity is like, um. You know, it, it's, it's like I never looked at it as like um, me being a badass or nothing. You know, it's just like I'm going to do what I got to do, you know, and, and if it means hurting somebody else, then, then, then I'm going to do that. What was your thing in there, bro? Did you, uh, I mean, were you playing handball, basketball? No, so, 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 so I worked out. I, I worked out. <laughs> you were a little, you yeah, yeah. I hit the bars. Like yeah, I hit the yard. I hit laps. I, I worked out and I was always healthy, right? And, um, you know, I, I hung around with the, you know, you got the basketball players, the handball players, the the, the dope fiends and, and whatever, right? And I think I, I, I like to hang around with the dudes that were all uh, grooming me, you know, since for, for, for the things that happened and that occur in there. And so, uh, you know, I'm very aware. I, I, I was uh, like, you know, from my age, for being a young age, and like I said, like somebody that's older now that has done the same, like you look at younger homies and you're like, the homies got potential. And, 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 and like, let me embrace them. Like, let me move them in. Like, let me lace them up. Because this is how we do things. He's got a good head on his shoulder. I would do uh, I would do a thousand squats a day, bro. Yeah, I didn't do that. <laughs> I, I had the tightest cheeks on the yard, bro. Real shit, dog. Two, two yeah. tumblers on my backside, bro. You know what yeah. I mean? It was... <laughs> I'm just fucking around, bro. It's been yeah, time I, 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 like, I, I did pull-ups, you know. <laughs> you know... Dips and shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You were y'all was strong from the big gun and you were strong yeah, from that. Well, you gotta have strong legs, man. You gotta, bro. It's the I, foundation. Sh shout out to my boy Ray Ray Ray, Ray from uh, Marijuana Locals. He was my celly, uh -huh. and, and I was just like, man, homie, this fool don't work out or nothing. And one time, me and that fool locked it up on some fucking just like not not squabbing, bro, yeah. but just like uh, you know, just wrestling. Mm -hmm. And he never worked out. I always worked out, bro. So I, had, I had no, I didn't, no. bro, because he was a big fat dude with. <laughs> trunk legs bro and he just had a fucking strong base dog mm -hmm. and when you're fucking wrestling with somebody in a small fucking cell it doesn't matter if your upper body's strong you know it, it's all yeah. about you. bro it's you it's, got it uh, yeah you gotta have legs you gotta have oh. a strong base you know I, th I would say that's where probably a lot of the power comes from your legs right kind of oh, like yeah. swing that motherfucking hip that punch mm -hmm. you know power coming from the motherfucking oh, hamstring or whatever the fuck <laughs> I don't know I'm just saying like strong legs support there were so many homies like especially like back in the day like fools would get out yeah. fools would get out bro <laughs> and they, they'd be all big up yeah. top yeah. and they have motherfucking toothpick legs I no mean, exactly that was me every single time bro yeah, get out, swole up top, toothpick legs, dog. Yeah, even now I still my legs are, I, I think are a little skinny, you know. But yeah, are you yeah. still are you still working? No, out? I go to the gym. I go to the gym on campus and stuff. I I work out in the mornings. And, and we'll get we'll get into the campus part of it. So yeah. I mean, let, let's go before we before we get into further into doing your time. I mean, what was your you, you know twenty two years in there? Huh? I mean, how do you? Uh, you you gotta be a we've had we so we we do spreads right here, bro. We uh -huh. do we do live spreads, cooking spreads right here. We did a Matt and Wish competition. They all failed it, bro. And uh, they had to go do a seizure at the fucking uh, the, at the in the supermarket down the street <laughs> yeah. right here. That was the, that's what the loser had to do. They had to fucking fall down on oh. the seizure, and we recorded it. <laughs> yeah, we still look like that. We still yeah, kids right here, bro. Right. You know we have fun. <laughs> yeah. Dog. But anyways, uh, you know there's a there's an art to making a spread. I yeah. mean, what, what what would you say? You're, I, you're, I kept it pretty simple. And, and here's the reason why, right? Like, you know the, these one eighties. You, you go to store one month. And then you might be three months until you go to score again because because of lockdowns. There's some places like High Desert, we'd go nine months out of the year lockdown. Two months here, three months there. Salinas, we went a whole uh, year straight. And then they started allowing us packages at a certain point or whatever, right? So uh, when you did go to stores, like, 
Uh, I'd buy the basics. I, I'd buy soups, beans, you know what I'm saying? Some coffee and, and, and make sure you got hygiene you're good. So I wasn't spoiled like that. I, I didn't have the cheese grease and, and the sausages and all that. Like, um, I'm sure I could have asked for it, but I realized like I was going to be in prison for a long time and I wasn't going to burn out my family and I wasn't going to burn out the homies. You know, and asking them for money and money. So I, I, kept the, I kept it pretty simple, but I had Sally's at the time that We're they'd have it like that. Yeah. And we would eat food. And, and, and you know, what's funny is that I had this one uh, uh, Sally, a uh, ghost from Lennox, right? Rest in peace. And uh, he, uh, uh, one time, you know, he came home from work or whatever, and, and I made burritos that day. And, uh, you know, I threw sausages in there and, and, and pickles and, and whatever in there, right? And he's like looking at me when he comes back and he's like, hey, what did you use? I go, and I told him, he's like, you throw a whole, uh, this much in there and this much? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, that was like a like a $10 burrito. It tastes like crap. <laughs> he told me straight up, like, <laughs> you can't cook. And, and because I wasn't used to all, using all those different things and stuff. To me, it was like, I could use, I, I could eat a soup and, and, and beans and, and I'm cool. 100%. You know, you know, you know what I like, bro? Uh -huh. I, the, I, to this day, and I don't do it very often, and I, it, I, I I hate doing this, bro, but I love talking about the recipes that are made. Give that to the homie right there, please, dog. You got to talk to Mondo in sign language sometimes, dog. Uh, thank you. Water. That's a shot of yeah. water right there, dog. Um, <clears throat> how about when you, uh, when, you, when you got the tortilla bag, right? Okay. It's emptied out, and then you fucking layer it with two fucking tortillas, doggy. Mm -hmm. Right? And then you throw the fucking noodle in there. Whatever you're gonna throw in there, a wet burrito. Yeah, the wet burrito, bro. Yeah. Bro, that shit hits every single time. But you gotta be patient, bro, yeah. because you might be hungry as fuck, dog. But you gotta let that bitch fucking just cook, expand, bro. And man, bro, it can be the simple. It can be just beans, noodles, and maybe yeah. some jalapenos in it. But when that fucking wet burrito forms in that fucking tortilla bag, dog, yeah. you know what it I mean? Blows up in there. And yeah. it blows up, bro. And it's just like, damn. And then, and if, and if you just like, you got a little package of squeeze cheese, homie, you pull it out, squeeze cheese that bitch right there that shit is no fire, it is bro. and, and the, the simplest things and i remember the first time that i tried it it was a homie from 38 it came from the county peewee and uh he's like hey have you ever had a wet burrito and at that time i think i had been down already like 10 years and i hadn't and um he was like yeah in the county like this is like a thing right and i'm like all right dad and man which is and stuff and i was like okay so he hooks me up and i remember tasting it for the first time and, and, and thinking it was like so great like you know, he, he hooked up this fat ass wet burrito, like you say, he put it in the bag, poured water in it after he had wrapped whatever in it, you know, beans uh, and, and, and all that stuff. And uh, afterwards, you know, he, he put like mayonnaise or, or, or chips on top with some hot sauce. And people out here are like, look at that, like that's disgusting, right? And uh, But in there, it's it, it was good. It's a fucking amazing. Yeah, it, it was great. And, it, and then it's like... And it's crazy because it doesn't have the same effect out here. Like if I I, I tried it when I got a YA, I, I did a spray with the homies and and I thought like this is nasty, <laughs> you know yeah. this is nasty. But while you're in there, it, it, you look forward to those things. You know just being able to like uh, let me get a package and, and buy a, whatever junk food you're gonna get and being able to just you know share that with your cellmate and with the homies and break bread, right? And and, and so you you look forward to those little things. Or how about when that homie dog, he be fucking shower sharking the spreads across the day room, bro. You know? And he ain't ever got nothing to throw in that bitch, bro. You yeah. Know what I mean? and, and then and to top it off, it's the dope fiend older homie, bro. Yeah. He spent all his fucking canteen on getting high, yeah. and now he's over there fucking eyeballing your spread of fucking across the day room with two pieces of bread in his back pocket, no, and, bro. You know what? Like that, I've always been like, you know what, homie? Get over here. <laughs> you, you, you're a homie, yeah. and I'm never going to treat you like that, but... Uh, Regardless of what you do with your own money, I don't care. You know, if we got it, I'm going to share it. You're welcome. You're welcome. And you know, he's a camarade, and you're going to embrace him, and you're going to treat him like that, and we're going to make sure that nobody goes without. You're a good dude, bro. Me, on the other hand, bro, you know, as you guys know, you know what I mean? That's mine. He fired the whole crew. Lucky's a piece of shit. Surviving Lux Lucky. Epstein Lucky Island. You know what I mean? You know what's funny about this, guys, is I told him once in a while, I, I said, hey, guys, one day this is going to all end, right? And I said, you guys are going to have a story about surviving Lucky. And it's funny you motherfuckers put that in the chat, dog, and I love you guys for that shit. You know what I mean? Real shit. You guys are funny as fuck. Um, but so, on the other hand, I would be like this, dog. I get it, bro. Sometimes I see that OG homie, and I'm just like, dog, come on, homie. I'm not, right, I see that. Good. I see that fucking bread hanging out your back pocket, dog. Make a taco, dog. But after you make the taco, dog, 
I don't really want you to stay, homie. You just need to go back and fucking hold up that table back over where you're at, dog. You know, but yeah. I'm just kind of a dick like that, dog. No, and, and you know, this is the way that, that, that I was taught, right? And it's like, at the end of the day, homie, like, if something kicks off, he's going to be there. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I look at it. Like, I'm never, and, and I'm not going to exclude anybody. Whatever you do on your personal time, if I got it and I, and I, and I got it like that, and you're a homie, you're welcome to it. Don't let me What's find it? out otherwise, bro. Someone's no, gonna call me. Like, well, no, I got man. shit, but the little, the little I do got, I'll share. Okay. You know what okay. I'm saying? As okay. long as we're good, and I know that you're a solid dude, you walk up to it. I just know this, bro. Huh. I know this, and I and I was taught similar too, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean. Uh, I, I know this. When shit pops off, some of us are going to be hungry and some of us are not going to be <laughs> Yeah. And, and you know what? And then I come from that from that generation that's taught like, if we're in the hole and there's one fucking soup we got, we're going to break it up. If we got to break it up amongst 10 people, then that's what we're going to do. In a situation like yeah. that, I'm 1,000%, uh, you know bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? 1,000%, brother. And and, and so in, in L.A. County Jail, yeah. we had a thing and we talked about it before. Um, LA County Jail is so fucking expensive. It's so treacherous. I mean, you got Shit. you know you got you got dudes going in and they burn their mama and every other bridge in the fucking world, mm -hmm. dog. You know what I mean? And they so fucking God got it out, bro. They fucking got the snake skin boots on. Their fucking mm -hmm. feet are tore up, homie. Malia's all that shit. But so I just this was a tactic that I learned in that county jail, bro, is to never make eye contact, bro. Yeah, just, just, just keep your ass like, hey, dog, hey, happy, hey, dog. <laughs> Five o'clock, homie. Fucking OG fucking sneaky over there, dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't even look, fool. Don't look, dog. Just keep your eyes on the prize right here. We're going to get through this right here, dog. No, and I get it, <laughs> homie. And, and I get it. I'm going to tell you something about myself, though. Like, I would see those same homies come through the county, right? Fresh off the street, my Leos. And I used to think about my dad. Yeah. That's what came to mind. That's right. and, I, and I thought, if my dad ever rolled up or was in this situation, how would I want? The homies to treat them. You're a good and, guy, And bro. so that's why I embraced them. I didn't judge them. And I said, you know what? You ain't doing too well. This is what I got. No judgment. Boom. Here you go. Hey, you know what, bro? This is I, this is a kind of like a, a fun conversation to have. Like you're, you know, we both on opposite ends of this yeah. conversation. And it's cool, <laughs> don't, dog. Do, don't, don't get me wrong. I've been a dick at times with people, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? But when it comes to people like that, that's the first thing that comes to mind is my dad. I'll tell you this. I'll say this. I have not ever been balding one time in the penitentiary. Yeah. Except, well, okay. Let me let me retract that statement. One time when I when I you know I hit a little something from the homies. They sent, whoop, you know what I mean? I was yeah. balling, and then all my boys were balling. My crew, my guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? We were all balling, bro. Ba 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 ba. You do what you do. Hey, dog. We're not gonna get high, bro. We're just gonna fucking stack our lockers, dog, because they all on tilt right now. They horrible. Mm. You know what I mean? We fucking yeah. you know. And then next thing you know, we're fucking. Ba -ba -ba -ba. You know what I mean? We're <laughs> fucked up, bro. You know what I mean? And we're like, what happened? They're stacking the locker. And they're like, fuck, we're fucking drug addicts, bro. You know what I mean? And this shit is fun as you shit. You your whole supply, yeah. It's like, fuck food, homie. Work. Yeah, we don't need food right now. I can't even eat right now. You're like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, tweaked yeah, out. That, you know that when you go to breakfast and you give your tray away. Oh yeah, all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I don't feel like eating. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Are you see the hom are you see the homies walk into the chow hall and you know sometimes it's mandatory chow, bro. You got it. Is. Yeah, you got to get up and you got to go chow even if you're not hungry. It's mandatory chow chow uh, movement just in case shit pops off. You better be there, bro. Mm -hmm. And so you see the homies that are up all night long on a fucking sick one and their beanies are pulled all the way down yeah. to their eyes, bro. And you hey, see. Right. Them. And I, every single one of them give their tray away, dog. Yeah. You know, but that's that's just a that's a, a lifestyle that you know we're painting to you guys that hopefully most of you don't ever have to experience. Uh, uh, but we find, but it's it's in 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 hindsight, it's it's I see a lot of humor in it, bro. There's yeah. so much humor, bro, in the prison system mm -hmm. and the way we function, bro. Like, yeah. bro, like I want to make a movie out of it. I yeah. really want to make a movie out of it because there's so much comedy and the homies are are, are so fucking funny, bro. Yeah. And just the shit they do, the shit they come up with, dog. I mean, yeah. that's why I wanted to start this podcast is to highlight th these these individuals that have been through things, but they're just fucking, in, in all reality, bro, it's just one fucking circus, one comedy <laughs> show. These dudes are fucking retarded, bro. <laughs> yeah. The shit that they do, bro, is, is, is fucking hilarious, and, dog. And that's how you cope. That's how For you real. cope. Exactly. That's how you're going to cope. Making light of situations. And uh, when shit gets serious, then it gets serious. But other than that, 
you know, you go through every day like, you know what, we're going to joke about this and make light of it. It's not the end of the world. Absolutely, absolutely. So moving forward into your uh, your time, um, 22 years is a fucking lifetime, brother. I mean, to go in there, you said at 19 years old, to get out, how did you? How old were you when you got out? Uh, 42. This I just got out in March last year, so it's almost going to be a year. I'm going to be 43 this year. You know what? I want to do this real quick. I want to put this on the chat, guys. Yeah, I mean, if you guys would like to, we had it on the other one, and we fucking we fell off. The ele- <laughs> Casey pulled up in his Tesla, fucking unplugged the electricity and burned out, bro. That's a little gangster motherfucker right there, dog. You know, man, motherfuckers, some other, like I said, some motherfuckers will fight you, call you out, want to throw hands, bro, and some of us going to get you in another way, and I'd rather throw hands with somebody than fucking shutting off my electricity, <laughs> but shout out to that dude, dog. You know, um, I want to post, what I'm saying is I want to post this back up right here. Uh, this is Happy's... Um, this is this is Happy's Cash App, and if you guys, you know, we we do this all the time, guys. You know what I mean? If you guys would like to help the homie out in his journey right here in the free world, um, please feel free to do so. And uh, anything and everything will help. And you know, we do this for all the homies right here to get out from doing. And I just want to say that that I appreciate it, you know, for for everybody showing love and, and support. Like uh, nobody has to do that, and I don't think that I got anything coming. So whatever people do to help out, like I appreciate it. And then, you know, and you know what, guys, check it out too. I see you guys right here in the chat. You know what? Fuck it. I'll bring back the table, dog. You know what I mean? It, it, honestly, it was Casey's table, dog. And and then the next day after when we said, hey, bro, you know, we're just going to move a different run, a different play. He was like, hey, Lucky, well, I'm going to need my table back. And I said, are you fucking serious, dog? You need the table, dog? He goes, yeah, dog, I need that table, bro. And I said, all right, fool, fuck it, get it then, homie. You got keys. <laughs> you got the fucking keys to the fucking studio. Go get it. And I didn't think he was going to get it, dog. That little motherfucker pulled up, dog, in a Tesla and figured a way to put it in the back of the fucking seat of the Tesla, dog. He took the table. That's why we got that table right there. Yeah. Casey fucking took the table, dog. You know what I mean? But hey. It's all good. But anyways, so, bro, what programs did you start utilizing? When did you feel like, hey, you know what, because 14 to life, after 14 to life, you start seeing, being able to see the board. I mean, were you ready to come home? What What was the process so, of getting out? I think the the first, no, I know. The first time I went to board, I was at Selena Valley, at Sea Yard, and uh, I was a shoe kick out. Um and I remember going to board, and I was just like, I remember walking across the yards, and the homies were like, why are you going to board? They're like, they're just gonna tell you no, and we know the outcome. I'm not expecting to go home. Like I'm being realistic. Like I know, I've been fucking up this whole time. I don't got one program under my belt. It was like 15 years into it or 14 years, whatever. And the board, uh, I go through this whole process, right? I'm talking to them, and um, you know, I'm not making excuses for nothing. Uh, they, they uh, first of all, they they ask you about you. They don't ask you about anybody else, right? They want to see if like if you. Um, have insight as to why you do the things you do. Do you accept accountability? Do you show any uh, type of remorse or whatever, right? And uh, I was pretty uh, straightforward with them, you know? Um, so at the end of all, they, uh, after the end of it all, right, they, they deliberate and they come back and they tell me, you know what? Uh, when you came in here today, we're ready to give you 10 years of denial. Wow. Right? A 10-year denial? Yeah, and I'm just like, Whew. to me, it didn't matter because at that time, 2014, um, nobody's getting paroled anyways. Like, we have not seen that yet, especially on those yards. And so I was like, okay, it didn't make a difference, and I, I really ain't registering this, and I'm thinking like, okay, okay, whatever. And uh, um, not that I want to stay in there. I want to go home at some point. I hope I can, but it's just like, okay. And then he tells me like, you know, but you came in here today and you presented yourself well. And, uh, you know, we've talked and we settled on seven. Right. Oh, you settled and, on, on so, a seven so year. So they said that. And then they said, uh, then we uh, took consideration a letter you had wrote to the victims, right? Yeah. The night before, which I just did the night before and I wrote and I said, you know what? Um, I'm going to write this to the victims, the carjacking victims. Ah. Because they're the, to me in my eyes, they're like, okay, they're innocent people. They're not gang members or anything like that. And, and I thought like, okay, I was raised a certain way where if you wrong somebody, like you acknowledge that, right? So, so, so I wrote them and, and, and said what I said, and they uh, read it and decided, like, you know what? We're going to give you fire denial. And I was like, okay, cool, whatever. And it's still, like, very far from uh, 
my mind like thinking parole or anything like that i'm thinking i'm still not gonna get out like it, it's still very far like i'm on a, a 180 that's unheard of anybody getting parole from a 180 yard right so i was like okay cool uh in the meantime i'll continue to do uh what i do to like better myself um because i spent a lot of time in ad say in the shoe and stuff like that on level fours where you're constantly on lockdown i read a lot i didn't like to read when i went to prison like i said i i went to sixth grade and after that it was always consistent my education mainly consisted of like independent studies or education while you're incarcerated right but uh something that some people may not know is like education is encouraged by the homies right like when you're on those yards they're they, you know they tell you they they hand you books you're spending a lot of time locked down and they hand you books and it's like here read about your culture study law whatever it is you know what i'm saying because it's looked at as like we want homies to be sharp you know mentally yeah you know what i'm saying so so you're encouraged to you know not only work out and be physically strong but mentally as well right and, and learn right and so for me um you know being in the hole at some point i looked at it like okay um you know i don't like to read but fuck i'm spending a lot of time in here and i'm gonna pick up that damn book yeah and next thing you know i fell in love with reading uh, I fell in love with books and I felt I had a very curious mind and it's like I wanted to understand the world and so and so I, I, I'm falling in love with we're reading and I'm constantly reading I read a lot of the, uh, Mexican history right where beginning with Aztec Aztec's history and indigenous studies and it's like uh Mexican revolution the, the the independence war and it led me to read about the Cuban revolution and other Latin American countries right and so I read a lot of socialism and, and communism and stuff like that right and and a lot of those uh you know uh, uh, beliefs are just aligned with like it, it it resonated with me right and it's like okay i like this and, and so um you know i i i uh, i cling to that right i, I clung to that stuff like to so so i studied a lot of that i studied a lot about our, about our culture and um you know um Programs like self help programs didn't come to us until later, like in 2015 after the hunger strikes. Let's let's take a let's take a quick one real quick, okay. bro. I gotta take a fucking stupid leak. Me too. I, you too. All right. Let's yeah. let's take a quick break and we're gonna get into this, guys. We're All gonna right. get into this. I'm over here moving in my chair. Oh, go ahead. I was doing the same thing. The Holland Park Gospel, my G. Blessings, power, respect. I tell you this for the last time. Enough of the drama. I ain't playing these games. Oh, gotta pick your soul up. Pick your soul up. Pick your soul up. Oh, gotta pick your soul up. Pick your soul up. Pick your soul up. Oh, gotta pick your soul up. Pick your soul up. Pick your soul up. Oh. Gotta pick your soul up Enough of the trauma I ain't playing these games You hate me when I'm up You love me when I'm down Stupid motherfucker Turn that frown upside down Clowns High off that dope I was clowning I was high off that dope I made a fool out myself I was high off that dope Gang bang Blood sport Bootang I love whores Dumb Burned out Crazy fool I'm banged out Hanging out with these fools One plus one equals two fools in a cell with no mail No talent is the policy No bail, don't bother me They caught him your drugs Comes with a college full of thugs Time to graduate Time to elevate Let's go You know I play mm. these games uh -huh. Oh, gotta pick your soul up Pick your soul up Pick your soul up Oh, gotta pick your soul up Pick your Can I get a moment of your time? Smoke a little, uh, life's a game of chess. Drugs, guns, who just got me on the run? Let me shine a little light. Can I get a moment of your time? Smoke a little, uh, life's a game of chess. 
drugs, guns, hoarders got me on the run. Let me shine a little light. I grew up on the 50s, I love my whole city. Got the little ones with me, I ain't going back to prison. House with a yard, I get my own unlocks, I walk my own yard. I'm Figaro and filthy. Where I come from, dog, everybody's filthy. Get your hands dirty with them concrete burpees. Beer runs and licks. My heart was made, dog, with every single brick. Legend in my own, I get my little shine on. Got a house loan, I see a hater smiling, broke with a mouthful. Run with my ninjas, used to gun with my ninjas, used to split top ramens on the hood with my ninjas. Can I get a moment of your time? Smoke a little, uh, life's a game of chess. Drugs, guns, hooters got me on the run. Let me shine a little light. Can I get a moment of your time? Smoke a little, uh, life's a game of chess. Drugs, guns, hooters got me on the run. Let me shine a little light. A 53 Thorta, Johnny's on the corner, Fidel's on the block. Pizza so hot, she slide right off. Terrace 49, I got a creature state of mind. Mama Vista Pay, you need to keep a loaded nine. Maury's on thick, used to cop the Cortez, you know the Chino got the kicks. Sitting in the park, you my son, I'm the shine. Rolling down the boulevard, palm tree line, bro, call me anytime. Jack and some cook, we can build on our life. Get our money up without committing all these crimes. Get it while you got it, mix your freedom with some logic. A gangster's moving silence, you ain't gotta speak about it. Tat it on our skin, you know where to do. Dog, fairly go on in. You need to rest your head, my door swings on a hinge. Hooters on your bumper, come and jump the neighbor's fence. Can I get a moment of your time? Smoke a little, uh, life's a game of chess. Drugs, guns, hooters got me on the run. Let me shine a little light. Can I get a moment of your time? Let's go, baby. Smoke a what little, that motherfucking uh, like, life's a game of chess. Play with this shit. Drugs, guns, hooters got me on the run. Let me shine a little light. A Merriam Street Garage. Gods are you my bro, gotta keep your soul alive Black Sabbath till I die, all heart park soldier Everybody know this, pull me out of mind You gon' get the fucking notice Gentrified faces, what they know about Chuck Taylor fat laces York Boulevard, Troy's drive through Got some chili cheese fries for a catch a state line Cali Mex got the meat BBQ's always turn up on the streets My homies all crazy OG yeah. homies done made me Conejo the homie Ray Loco the homie Yogi the homie Night out the homie Backstreet villain the homie Whips the homie Let's go deep on me All respect to the rest of the team Shit Is this, is this Motherfuckers like yes, sir. That's more water for you, baby. Got to keep you hydrated while you're right here on Hoodstocks, baby. You know what, bro? It's crazy. Well, we won't talk about that. But sometimes we have cats on here that are coming out from situations like you, brother, and they are very, very... But you've been out for 9, 11 months, so you you understand your footing in the world by now, right? Oh, yeah, I'm getting the hang of it. You're getting the hang of it. Absolutely, yeah. brother. Absolutely. Yeah, you guys see the homies cash app right there. You know what I mean? Drop them a couple dollars. You know what I mean? Um, and, uh, you know... <laughs> You know how we do it right here, dog. Don't play with this shit, dog. You know how we do it. And I love you guys, man. I love you guys. And, uh, yeah, Droops, Droops the homie, 100%. I was I talked to Droops today, you know what I mean? Um, ah, you know, and I love you guys too, man. There's going to be changes right here, you know? And uh, we'll correct it. Fuck it. I, you know, I'm going to get another table, dog. Casey repo the other one. I'm going to get another table, dog. Fuck it. You guys want me back to the table? I go back to the table, dog. But I had a mindset like, fuck it. If I'm going to take all the homies out, then I'm going to take myself out, dog. You guys know in the first uh, uh, first podcast coming forward, I took myself out the video too, dog. I said, fuck it, homie. I'm taking myself out the game too. And I'm just going to, you just going to hear my voice. And then you guys were tripping on that. Fuck it. If I need to get back to the table, I'll get back to the table. We're going to do what we got to do. But um, anyways. I love these intimate conversations when there's not too much other just different things, random stuff getting thrown out from different directions. It's easier to have a conversation, a one-on-one with the homie Happy right here, dog. Bocos, Pedro Locos right here. Don't play with it, you know. Rolling Heights, stand the fuck up. You know what I mean? We got a, we got, we got a real one in the building, you know. Um, and so we, you were talking about, you were talking about, we, the last time you went yeah. to the board, uh-huh. the, you you guys agreed on what a seven. A so seven? I didn't agree on anything, right? But, yeah. but this is what they hand you <laughs> they down. Hand it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so 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 they told me seven, and then they're like, you know what? After we read your letter, um, we agreed on to give you five, and I was like, okay, and I, and I went back, and here's the thing: it's like, um. You know, I remember at that time, right? My, my my sister working, like 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 she has her own job, and my mom and my other sister, and the family like communicating amongst each other and like wanting to support me, 
and, and, and I remember at that time, my first parole board here and receiving like 30 some support letters, right? And here I am being a fuck up my whole time in prison, not even making the effort to do my part, right? To get home while they maintaining this hope that I could come home someday, right? But in my mind, that's like, they believe that I could make it home at a time when I never even thought it was possible, right? So, so, so for that, like, 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 I'm forever like grateful for that, right? And, and so, um, you know, and they're working and they're communicating with the family and they're making sure that these letters are written for board so so that it could help me. And I thought, you know what? I should at least do my part. Yeah. Right. I I have to do that. So I wrote. The, I made the effort. Like, let me at least write some parole plans. Right. And it's the least I could do. Whether I think I'm going to get out or not, I have to do that. Um, let me write a, a, a remorse letter to these people that I carjacked that yeah. just happened to be there. And that's right? where we were at in the story. Yeah. yeah. So so that's what I did. They gave me the fire denial. And, uh, you know, I took it. And, and I still wasn't entertaining the thought that I could get out. I'm just taking like, okay, I'll be back in five years to see, see what they say, you know. Because at that time, like, the only people that, like, ever – or parole like that you hear of is like people like lifers that make it down to like a level two or something like after 20 something years or uh people that precede up and i didn't you know i'm like i don't think i'm going to a level two anytime soon you know what i'm saying it's gonna be probably a very long time and uh, i certainly ain't gonna pc up you know so 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 to me it's like it, 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 it's it's kind of like you look at it like it, it, it's a process and it's like okay i'm you know i'm taking one step closer to that but it's still too far to uh, even entertain that. So in the meantime, this is where we're at. Let me. Let me I want to ask you a question. And this is. The, I think this is a good question to ask you, brother. This mm-hmm. is a good question to ask you. So with the with the new system that we have with the CDCR mm-hmm. and and a lot of the uh, a, a lot of, I would say the. Would this be considered a pendulum? Pendulum? Is this a pendulum? pendulum. What is it? Pendulum. Pendulum, right? Mm-hmm. It's a pendulum, right? So with the pendulum of good homies and and then the other side, mm-hmm. right, has has shifted where where it's it's like this. This is the homies and, and now because now we have these 50, 50, 50 yards and, and, and I haven't been in the system for the 50, yeah. 50 yards, bro. And it seems like they're putting a lot of homies in a bad situation, good homies, and hanging that over their head and put them in these predicaments where where hey, well you you want a pro, you gotta go to this program yard here here, and it's a 50 50 yard with I mean you could say half are good homies and a half are bad homies, but where I come from, if you're on a bad place for X amount of time, bro, you yeah, just stay the there, homie. Just you just made yeah. your bed, bro. You know, yeah, and, and, and you know how what? do you like, feel about like, that? Like, like, like I never been to those yards, um, but for me, it's it's nothing. It's not acceptable, right? It's just like you have to live with that, and it's like, um, oh, uh, no, I can't tell others what to do, right? I'm, I'm not gonna tell others what to do, but it's like I know what the hell I'm gonna do. You know, and, and I told myself if it means going out like that, then I'd rather stay in prison for life. Because at the end of the day, I got to live with myself and, and look at myself in the mirror and be okay with the person that I am. And But a lot of, there's a lot of, would you say, I mean, you know from firsthand experience being the fact that you are uh, basically fresh out still, mm-hmm. that you've been able to experience that side of the system. I mean, is it the system trying to break the uh, certain good homies? I mean, are they trying to get everybody to S and Y? So what is your thoughts I, I, on that? I don't that? know what their agenda is, right? And I couldn't, I, I, I can't speak for uh, what their strategy is, but it's like, yeah, there has been this shift in, in recent years where it's like, okay, um, you know, first they just had us and why, right? And and then first, like, when I went in the system, like, um, dudes that went that to that side were usually like dudes that already had got hit on the yard and they're like, okay, then they offer that to them. And then years later, it was like they didn't even get to that point. There's just dudes that are scared and like, I can't be here. My life's in danger. And they tell on everybody, you know, in exchange for protection. Right. And they go to that side. Um, and now they created another thing. Right. And it was like these 50 50 yards, knowing that it was in a cause conflict. Right. Now you're now you're transferring dudes that are from GP two yards or three yards that are going down to two yards and integrating them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um. You know they're aware they, they they know what they're doing you know what i'm saying uh they they've seen a reduction in the violence in recent years ever since they released everybody from the shoe and you know 
um, they try to create shit. They try to put us one one against another, and they try to create situations. And so it's, it's unfortunate that you have homies that have been down 20-something years. Um, you know, they're on their shit. They don't get caught up, and, 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 and you know, they make it to a three-yard, eventually from a four-yard, and then eventually to a two-yard, and they got bored coming up, and then they get transferred to these yards. And now they got to make a decision. That's a cold setup. And no, though. it is. That's a cold setup, man. Man, that shit is treacherous right there. And you're putting a dude that has been down, like you said, 20-some years, 30-some yeah. years. Stand-up dudes, like, you know what I'm saying? The homies that have always done what's expected, right? And now they're they're, they're, they're placed in a situation where, like, they got to make a decision. Hmm. Yeah. That's a, that, I would say, I, I, I you know what? For a lot of people, they'd be like, "That's an easy situation. That's an easy decision." I mean, <laughs> until you're put in that. Yeah, exactly. Until you're until you're put no, into you're that right. situation, and 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 like, I, I mean, I would say this, bro. Even the most solid homie, if they're put in a situation after being down for 20, 30 fucking years, bro, mm -hmm. and they're saying, "Fuck," they're putting me like this, but this is my. I guess this is my chance. They're telling me that I can go home. Mm -hmm. I mean, man, that's a fucking horrible predicament to be in when you have been down so long and you can look at it two different sides been down so long you will need to get home to your family you know the family no, yeah you're right you know or and but then you got you got the you know but what if you don't go home you know what if the board doesn't go home uh -huh. now you fucking just buried yourself and you know what I, i've always been a firm believer that if you you know remain true to the game and you do what you're supposed to do and you think do things the right way it all works out in the end like, I didn't have to fucking go that route to get out. You know what I'm saying? So to me, at least for me and for a lot of us, it, 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 there's no justification for that. Right? And it's like I had a cellmate that was on a three-yard with me during my last years, went to one of those yards, got off, knowing that it was just going to send him back a few years and he was going to go back up to a level three or a level four. But he told me before he left, like, you know what, that's my name. I didn't do all this shit to end up on one of those yards and fuck up on my career and my name. Yeah. You know? Because at this at that point is all you have is your name. Exactly. That's all you have, your word and your name in prison. So you, you get to the point of seeing the parole board again. Yeah, so I went three times. You went three times. Yeah. You went three times. The first time was at what point? Second time, I, I, third time. I, I was, I was, I think, 14, in, 14 years into it. Uh, the first time. Uh, the second time was six years later. So it was at the 20th mark, right? And uh, same thing. I went to board. I had write-ups. I had 1030s, confidential informants, telling on me these dudes that go to S&Y yards, because that's what the guy to do, to go to S&Y yards. got to tell on people, right? So um, I go, and I don't expect to go home again. But I go with an open mind. Like, let me see what they got to say. And it's all strategy, bro. Like, like it comes down to that. Like, the board, parole board process, it's all strategy. And it's like, how can I position myself in a favorable position where they don't have shit on me and I could get, go home? And, and, and we're fortunate that in recent years, the parole board process has changed where they have the burden of, like, having to prove, like, that you are a threat to society and they, they if they can't prove that you are no longer a threat to society and they don't got shit on you, then they gotta let you go. Absolutely. But you gotta still work for that in complete programs. No, yeah, and, and, and it's easy. Like, like you know, um, after the hunger strikes, we're like, we got these things. We, we, we got rehabilitation programs. We asked for vocational programs, for access to education, right, to higher education. So in 2015 was the first time that I enrolled in college program through the coastline, right? And my reason for doing it was, um, you know, I, I thought back and I'm looking at myself like, you know what? Like I, I've done all this reading, I've done all this studying of things, and and, and it's like I got no 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 document to show it, and it's fine. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, I've done all these things in my life, and and nothing that. Uh, my family could be proud of, right? My mom can't go to work and be like, oh, my son's in prison, right? When everybody's bragging about what their kids are doing. So I, one of my reasons for enrolling in college was like, you know what? I want to send a degree home and, and be able to show my mom so she could put it on her wall or be like, yeah, my son may be in prison, but 
you know, he accomplished this. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And so so that was one of the things that motivated me to to, to enroll in school. And aside from that, was just my thirst for knowledge. Like, just, just wanting to learn, right? And and, 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 and do, be open-minded and be like, whatever is going to better better me as a person, then I'm willing to do that. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Hurt starts, baby. That's what we do right here. That's how we do this shit right here, dog. Thirst for knowledge. I mean, there's cats out here, bro, that have fucking never done no time, and their thirst for knowledge, I mean, ah. has sometimes, and I, I was one of those dudes long time, right? You know, not throwing rocks and... And so you what, what what were you able to accomplish in there in so, regard um, were you able to send a degree home to moms? Yeah yeah, you know what I I got an A degree in, from Coastline in social and behavioral science. Right? Um you know and it took time I, I you know my first class was uh uh psychology, developmental psychology, right? Um and and it's crazy because it's like reading those textbooks it's like I learned a lot about myself. And what a child needs, um, the kind of nurturing they need to be raised in a healthy environment, right? So they could grow up to be successful, right? Or their best chance. And it's like, damn, you look back and you're like, okay, now I understand like where, where things went wrong and stuff, right? And I don't blame anybody. Um, and then at the same time, it's like, uh, 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 it just opens your mind, man. It, it opens your mind to a lot. And I remember my first class, uh, I ended up going to the hole. Right, and I ended up taking that course from the whole. Luckily, my, my my the proctor at the prison was like, you know what, you could take this exam right here in the cage, and I took it. And out of a hundred questions, I got ninety seven were correct. Damn, bro. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and I read, I had so much time in the hall. I read that damn textbook, and I knew it so fucking well, right? That I scored good on, and that was my first class that I took. And then from right there, it, it, it's like not only did I want to do this for my family, for myself, but I also for like. Everybody that looks at us like we can't do it. It was a challenge. Like, you know what? We could do this shit just like anybody else. And we could excel. And so, um, yeah, I started taking courses little by little. And then I started attending the uh, face-to-face college uh, program that they had in Lancaster on the 270 uh, by Anova Valley. You know, so they, it, was a, it was a business degree. And then they changed it to some other degree. Nonetheless, like every opportunity that I had to, to enroll in a college course right there, I took. And then there was other programs on the side that I took, you know, and like, you know, AA, NA, these are the, the things that the that, 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 that parole board mandates, right? And it's like, ah, I could take it. You know, I, I can't say that. You know, for some people it helps them. For me, it didn't help me. It's just too simple because I'm somebody that needs to understand a little things more in depth. And that's what college did for me. It allowed me like, you know, abnormal psychology to understand addictions. You know, and certain behavior. So, so for me, it was that. It was education. Absolutely, brother. Salute to you on that, bro, for taking them steps and having the, you know, just having the sense to to do that. You know, and it, it helped you to get out. It helped yeah. you to get out, correct? No, you're right. And, and it's just like these. like these things are always seamless. Like, and, and it's like I think it was the second time I went to board, and they're like. Yeah, you're doing all these great things. Like, you're participating in these programs and you're going to college, but your behavior, you know, it doesn't match that. Yeah. So, at that time, they're like, you know, we're going to deny you again based on that. And it was like, it, it's all good. And then, and then to me, it's kind of like, oh, I still couldn't entertain the thought of going home. It's, it's You got to take it in steps. It's, it's a process. And it's like, um, for us, I, I remember for me thinking like, if I ever get a three-year denial, then I know I'm close. I'm, I'm at that door. You know, it comes down from a five to a three, and and, and now, now I'm starting to hear that they're letting people out. But in the meantime, I do understand that I'm still in prison. And it's, until then, you know, I try to be careful, and, and, and I'm still, you know, I'm a homie. Let me, let, me, let me ask you a question about the letters you wrote to the, to the victims. Did, yeah. you, did you get a response back? No, no, and I didn't get a response back, and I didn't expect one. But it's like this, like, I, 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 you know, the way that my family raised me is like, you do something that's like, then, you know, you, you take accountability for it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, I fucked up. And if you wrong somebody that didn't deserve it, then, then, then you tell them, hey, you know what? 
I, I fucked up and I'm sorry and I apologize and you didn't deserve that. They weren't gang members or they weren't, they, they were just innocent people. So I had no problem telling them like, hey, you know what? We crossed past that day because this is the person that I was at that time. Yeah. And, and how long was that letter? It was a page and a half, two pages at the most. Yeah. And, and it's crazy because you got to think like, how do I even start a letter like this? They probably don't even want to hear from me. As soon as they see my name, they're going to be like, recognize like this is the person that committed that crime against me. I mean, does it really even get to them, though? Yeah, yeah. So supposedly, I don't know if it got to them. But my whole, uh, and I was genuine and I was sincere when I wrote it. And I was just like, you know what? These two ladies didn't do anything to me. They're, they're the only thing that, you know, they just happen to be out there when they, when our our paths cross. When I was this person that was doing willing to do whatever it takes to to get away, yeah, to evade arrest, yeah, fight or flight, yeah, yeah, and so moving forward into you getting to the point of being granted parole, mm -hmm. where are we at right there? So. I was on this uh, 270 yard in Lancaster right on B yard. And it's like, and I remember like, like I think uh, I got put up for a level three. They, they come up with this new system where like, you could still have level four points, but you could get override to a level three. If you could like remain at your like for a year or two, right? So I'm there in the week that they're gonna transfer me, I get in a fight in the yard. It's me uh, with another homie over some words. And it's like, uh, that, and that's not something that even supposed to happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it happens. It. Yeah, it, it happens. happens. I got caught up in the moment, and it happens. Me and the homie exchange some words. My Sally jumps in. His Salmay jumps in, and it turns into a two-on-two -two scuffle, right? So they scratch me off the list. I ain't going to a three-yard. So now I got to do like another year or two or whatever on that yard without getting caught up, and, and, and I still do what I do, right? But I'm just being very careful. Because I, I, my mentality is like, I'm not going to make it easy for these people to keep me there, you know, or to have anything against me. So it turns out that, yeah, they, they, they uh, I go about a year, another year or so clean and they say, you know what? Uh, my thing was this, I was pushing for an override because I'm like, you know what? I got my AA degree. There's a, a BA program on this level three. Can I go over there? You know, that's my whole reason for going over there. Uh, that's what I tell them, and they're like, you know, I had I had met the requirements that I had stayed clean like for a year without a write up or two or whatever it was, and they do they override me to the three yard, and so at that point, um, I was like a class or two short from graduating, and, and, and I obtained it over there. Uh, I graduate, like I said, I earned an A in, in social and behavioral science, and then I uh, I fill out the application for the BA program through Cal State LA, right. So I started, uh, you know, uh, COVID set us back about a year or two. And then we start school and I started attending class. And uh, one of the things like with the parole board when I was going through that process was that they really like, um, they, they, they really like education. That's, that makes a big difference because not everybody goes to college. Now it's being offered for free and it's like not everybody is like, has the discipline or, or, or the interest to do those things. And here we are, the only BA program in the state at Lancaster, and there's only 25 of us. And the majority of us are level four rides. We got homies coming from the Bay, homies coming from Calipat. And prior to that, the first two cohorts, you did not really see too many homies. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they didn't, uh, that yard wasn't open to us. They didn't want any of us on that yard. And so finally they had opened it up for us. We went over there. And for me, it was like, you know, I took pride in that. It's like, you know what, we're, we're, we're here. Uh, we're going to show them otherwise. You, you know what I'm saying? That we could do this shit like Absolutely. everybody else, right? And so we took on that challenge. And uh, that's where I began the, the BA program in communications through Cal State LA. Um, you know, and this is after I've been through my second parole board process, right? I ended up going to my third parole board hearing there. Um, they, didn't, they had like another two, I think, uh, 1030s, I mean, confidential information from people that debriefed, locked it up, and told whatever they said about me, right? But a lot of it was just like at that point was irrelevant. They're like, they're speaking on stuff that happened a few years ago. Um, and the fact is, it's like, 
it, it, it becomes a, a scale where like, okay, how much good shit do you have and how much bad shit? Yeah. And the good outweigh the bad at that time. Okay. Right? So they grant me parole. Wow. This the, that that board here, and they grant you. Parole. Yeah, they they grant me parole. How I mean, how was it while you were in there? How tense were you? I mean, how how important was it for you at the time? Obviously, you know, at any point, freedom is should be most important. But you, at this point in time of this board hearing, you, I mean, you really worked for it. You know, you 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 accomplished some things. You you know, degrees, so on and so forth. I mean, you did. You put in the work. And then at this point, you're not that kid that you were that got arrested. No, you're you're, you're a grown man now. You, no, you're you changed. Right. No, you're you know? right, and, and I think uh, you know there is moments throughout your incarceration that you, you'll just stop and be like, "Damn!" Like, you know, just being honest with yourself. Like, if I could be out, I'd rather have that shit to feed in here. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like I remember I was selling with my homeboy local and my homeboy Mouse, and we were all lifers in this life. Having those conversations is like, damn fool. Like we're really fucking throw our life away at a young age and we're here stuck for life, right? And, and and we're like, fuck it, you know? But at the same time, you know, in your private moments, when you're by yourself and, you're, and you think about all this shit that you're missing out on life, um, you think like like anybody that's, and, and, and they're lying if, if they say they'd rather be in prison than out on the streets, right? Um, you think about, yeah, I'd rather have that shit, you know what I'm saying? So. So I started seeing people going home, and I'm thinking like, I don't know, I'm not a fucking idiot. You know what I'm saying? I could go home. I just gotta be careful and be on my shit. And like, you know, I'll do the homework. It's like a test, like you're studying for a test when you go to board. Like these are the questions they're gonna ask me, and these are the responses they want. And so you, yeah. so you pass the test. Exactly. And so when you walk out of that board hearing, what what is and they grant you parole, brother? Like what is your I mean, what 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 are you feeling inside? So like I mean for me it was just nice being able to call my mom and I have that disappointment and tell her like, Oh, I got denied again. You know what I'm saying? Like being able to share the news with my family, like I'm actually coming home this time. You know what I'm saying? Like all these years that they maintained hope. Um, you know, my extended family. My friends, my homies, my homies always been there for me, like the whole time, right? Um, you know, other people that 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 I met in there, like volunteers that used to come in, and um, you know, you just seeing people treat you like a human being. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's like at that point, I'm like, damn, I'm I'm gonna go home, and you know, you, now you you're, now you're like, I can't disappoint anybody, you know. I can't disappoint it. Too many people have invested in me. And at the same time, you're like, okay, well, they granted me parole, but you understand there's just another process. Like, the governor has to sign off on the shit, right? So he has, you know, the authority to be like, you know what? No, we're going to in-bank him or, or, or whatever, and it's going to go through another process. So that period takes 150 days. So in that 150 days after you're granted parole, you're still waiting. And for me, I couldn't really entertain the thought that I'm actually going home and, and start making plans as much as I've always wanted to. I'm like, there's still a possibility that this fool could sign off and say like, no, you know what I'm saying? Or I'm gonna overturn that decision. How many months is 150 days? It's five months. Yeah, 160 is six months, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, was that the longest 150 days of your life? Or did you not really, like you, you did not, so, it sounds like you didn't really dwell on it too hard. I but. didn't, because you know what? I thought about it like, Okay, I got one foot out right now. And you know how many people would just love to be in that position? Yeah. Like, just have a grant. And I look around, and I'm looking at all the homies that have been down around, and everybody else around me, right, that has life still. You know, so for me, I see that, like, you know what? I got one foot out, and uh, I'm going to be optimistic. Now, if, if for some reason he signs, he doesn't sign off, and, 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 and he sends me the inbound, fine. If he tells me, hey, you're going to have to come back in two, in three years or five years or whatever, fine. And so so I understood that it wasn't over until, like, that moment came, that 150 days came, and he took no action. And when that came, then he has, I think they had 10 days to release you. And it's like, <laughs> okay, now I can start preparing to get out. So, you know? so, so do they let you know when that, I mean, obviously, you know, you got a calendar up in that bitch yeah. and you, you checking them days off. So when you get to the 150 day, 150 day 
Um, do I mean do do they come and holla at you? Are so, you yeah. are you on their bumper, the counselor's bumper? Like, hey, yeah. that's 150 days and eight so, hours, bitch. <laughs> so so I holler at the staff right there, and they're like, hey, like every every once in a while, I'll be like, hey, can you check and, and, and see if there's anything like if they're taking any action on it? Like, no, no. So at the 150 days, I, I check, and they're like, nah, it doesn't say anything. I check with the counselor, and they're like, yeah, hey, um, um, you know, he the, the the decision was upheld. He didn't change anything. So wow. you're going home. They got 10 days within the next 10 days. And from what I see, the other people going home, it's usually like like somewhere in the middle, between like the sixth, seventh day, somewhere or something. Like within the next 10 days, I know I'm leaving. Damn. I'm able to call my mom and my family and tell them like, hey, I'm really coming home now. Let me say this, bro. And this is this is a little, this is a kind of like a little bit of funny that huh. everybody saw on social media. There was a, a cat named Devour. He's a rapper. Uh -huh. And and they and they somebody videotaped him when he paroled, you know, and he didn't do no time like like you did, bro. You know, I don't know how much time he did some years, whatever. The homie gets out and it shows all the parolees getting out, you know, with their uh, you know, little briefcase. Yeah. <laughs> and and you know what this dude was pushing, bro? A cart. He was pushing a cart. Yeah, you I seen it? Did yeah, you see it? No, but I seen them. I bro, seen them how you push a cart out, uh, dog? Speak on that real quick. Who? So first of all, I'm not taking out? that shit out with me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, 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 I'm thinking like, I don't need this clothes. I don't need these books. I don't need none of this. These possessions. All I need is the pictures that belong to me, that mean something to me. Some letters. Maybe I had some artwork that I had done. I'm carrying a little ass plastic bag, and that's it. Bro, what what would put you in a position, bro? And, and and as far the experience that I have in the system, bro, would never push somebody in a in a position to push out a cart, bro. Fuck no. is, is there any position that will keep you with all like you push out a cart, homie? And if you're a rapper, that's a lot of fucking rap music yeah. you wrote, bro. I mean, that cart had to have TV, it had to yeah. have Walkman. Keep fuck back. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, bro? I don't want none of that. Oh and, and, my and, god. You know, so I, I you know, I can't speak for him. When I'm just saying, like, it's, I don't need any of that. Hey, but it, but it's it's <laughs> and you know what? I'm not. I'm I'm talking shit, and I try yeah. to get the homie on the podcast too, dog. But and if he was sitting in front of That's me, funny. I I would ask him, bro, like, bro, what the fuck was in that cart, dog? Yeah, what's I, so fucking important <laughs> that you gotta take with you, and you can't get out here? You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. So it's let's get back to the ten days. You get to the 10 days. What day did you get out of? I think it was maybe like the 6th or 7th, like I expected. And yeah. they come and tell me, like, they tell me like three days before. They're like, hey, um, you know, on this day, you're going to be paroled. And like, okay. Or it might be the day before. But we we kind of know now, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like on a three-yard, we're seeing these dudes go home. And we're seeing a pattern. Like, it's like in the middle, like the 5th, 6th, 7th day. Or, you know, I think it was a Wednesday that I got out. Right, and they told me like the day or two before or whatever, and and I think the counselor pulled me to the side. And was like, hey, you're gonna get on this day. I call my family. They made arrangements. They they rent an Airbnb down the street from Lancaster. Oh, thank you, boss. And and so um, no, you're good. And so um, you know, I, I tell them and they prepare and they come down. And it's my dad, my mom, my 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 two sisters and my nieces, and my dad, uh, my my sister's husband, right. And so, um, you know, hold on, hold I on. I still can't hold, believe it. Hold on, hold on, real quick. All right, right now, quick break, guys, and we're gonna talk about the homie paroling after twenty two fucking years, dog. I gotta piss again. Why? <laughs> because these motherfuckers are feeding me too much Gatorade, dog. Hold on, real quick. We'll be right back. Hold on. Need the 
chill out. COVID 19, get the fuck out. They trying to kill us all, let the smoke out. She tastes like a beast with her mouth foul. Shack on this bus, time to wild out. Sitting in the cell, this is my house. The fight for my freedom, homie, tell no lies. Through the window of my cellar, watch the sun rise up. Mayday, mayday. When it's time to ride, you know the code name. One to the two, to the three, for the four fade. Hey, hey, play me like an okay, okay. Drop park bombs, got my wall paint all day. Police brutality, got a cold of a cold case. No way. Push the boom bop in the high tops. Whoop, whoop. Protest nonstop, talk with your walk walk. High school, you're probably a big lot. Looking like a pig, you a pork chop. No door knock from the home girl. In the locker room, you got treated like the home girl. Wanna be bad, hope, got yourself a badge, boy. Wanna be hard, but you can't walk the yard, boy. Wanna big bite, but you bite like a bitch, boy. But you bite like a bitch, boy. The fight for my freedom, homie, tell no lie. Through the window of my cellar, watch the sun rise up. Check one, two, one, two. Damn, the fucking urinal right here, uh, the restroom right here at Hoodstocks was backed up. Had to go fucking piss outside, dog. And you got to watch out when you piss outside, dog. You know what I mean? Because shit. You get caught by the hooters pissing outside, bro? Next thing you got to fucking register. <laughs> I see you, Wolf. I see you, motherfuckers, right here. <laughs> see you guys tapped in right here, enjoying this motherfucking amazing story right here with the. What, what do you prefer, brother? Do you prefer uh, Happy or Eddie? It, it doesn't matter, homie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, whatever makes you happy. Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> that was stupid. My bad, bro. Um. Yeah. I'm good with the first in the government. I ain't tripping. Um, how does how does one you you talked that you started kind of like skipping forward a little bit in regards to family that was there to pick you up? Yeah. Um. But how does one prepare to get out after 22 years? I mean, what's running through your freaking head, bro? I mean, you know what? Like, it's still like even now I'm outside sometimes in the street and I'm like there's those moments where I step back and I'm like. Damn, I'm out here. I'm really out here, right? And uh, you know, I, I I know a lot of homies that that, that were also ex lifers and stuff that I see out here. And there's those moments where we have when we're like, "Fuck, we're really out here," right? And it, it's unbelievable. So, um, you know, you, you, there is no way to prepare. But at the same time, I was just like, you know, you step into situations and you're like, "Fuck it," like you know, there, there is no way to prepare for it. It's just like, and for me, I was like, this is something positive. I wasn't stepping into a dangerous situation. I'm, I'm, I'm preparing to go home. And it's like, I think like, I didn't sleep like the two days before I went home. Yeah. And even five days after I got home. So I didn't sleep like for a week. <laughs> and I'm like anxious and shit. Yeah. Walking around my, my, my first week out. Um, because I was like, it was, it's just like so much. It's overwhelming. It's, it's, you know, from, um, you know, being in prison, thinking you're going to die in there, you know, and living for so many years with that thought. And that's your reality to now. It's like, damn, I'm, I'm really out here, you know? And so how have you, you, so you said your family picked you up. Yeah, they picked me up and uh, they were waiting at the, at the entrance of the prison, I guess, where they had people wait for, for people they pick up. And there was a lady there also from one of the programs that, um, I was I participated in which was like a dog training program, right? She's oh, you, out you, you were, lonely was in that dog training. Okay, thing, no, she's in a different one. Okay, okay. Yeah, but yeah, so we're I was in the pause for life one, 
which is better than his. I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, uh, you know, we're both doing the same shit. You know what I'm saying? So, and I, and I was grateful for that. You know, these are people that come in and it's like, they don't judge us. They show us love and they give us this opportunity to like work with these dogs. And you fall in love with them and it's like, it's it's cool, man. It, it's cool to be just like being involved with something like that, right? So she's out there uh, with her with her phone and recording me and my family at that very first moment when uh, you know, I step out of the van from the back and I have a little bag, a plastic bag with, you know, I I, I think I had like a like a like a like a a pain or something or, and a doll that I wanted to give my niece and some envelopes and stuff, right? And I was just like, um, you know. She captured that moment where I hugged my mom and my sisters and all of us are just hugging. Wow. You know? You still got that video? Yes. Can you send it to me? Yes. I like to put it up. No, you can put it up. Yeah, to give people a little bit of a like contrast of like, you know, it, it really connects you after sitting here for X amount of hours right here and sharing your story. I mean, I think that right there will capture a, 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 an ending of... 22 years <laughs> you know oh, yeah and it's what it looks that, like, like right we looked at it like you know you, you live for so long and it's like in there believing like okay this is what i'm gonna die you know i'm gonna die in here and it's like uh you know and, and to just be getting out is, is, is it is a big deal 100%. it's a big deal and, and you you know going through that experience it gives you a, a different perspective on life how, how have you adapted since being out? You've been out for nine, 11 months, something like that you said? Yeah, 11 months now. 11 months now. How have you, have you, how have you tra transitioned into, uh, you know, you, you are you still, you know, you went in at, what, 19 you said? Yeah. 19. I mean, obviously you learn a lot while you're in there, but it, it's hard for a prison to prepare you for life, freedom, in a no, sense. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, I had told myself in there, like, if I'm just going to come out here and just, you know, fuck things off, what's the point of getting out? Like, I'm not going to put my family through that, right? So uh, you you realize and you appreciate, like, just the smaller things, you know? You're, like, you appreciate for you being able to just walk freely on the street and go to the park and be with your girlfriend, call your family whenever you want. You know what I'm saying? Go to the refrigerator. Like, no, I don't have a lot of in there, but, you know what I'm saying? Like, Whatever the hell you can fucking well, go to a store and buy something with your EBT card, and you're well, good. Well, what was your, what was your first meal getting out? I went to my grandma's house because I wanted a homemade meal, and I remember like, oh, fuck, I don't even remember what I ate. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what I ate. But yeah. I just remember like thinking like, damn, what I wanted some home cooking for my grandma. And I went to see both my grandmas. I'm fortunate to have both my grandmas alive, right? Yeah. And I remember going to my grandma's house, the one where I was raised at that house in Roman Heights, and then going to my other grandmas in Rialto, and both of them feeding me. And just like, it was crazy because the family would just like turn and look at you like, I can't believe you're really here. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a ghost at this stage. Yeah, right and, it's, and it's surreal. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's a good feeling, man. It, it's a good feeling to be out. And I'm very fortunate because, like you said, like some people come out to some fucked up situations, you know? And you had and a it's almost system. a setup, yeah. And yeah. I had a support system. I had my family. Um, you know, I was enrolled in school. Like the second day I got out, I went to, I showed up to Cal State LA. And I spoke to uh, the director of the Center for Engagement. You know, and I was like, hey. And she knew me because she always saw the program in prison. And, uh, you know, I remember being there with my two sisters and, and, and talking about her and her reassuring me, like, hey, like, you're good. You're in good hands. Like, we got you. Damn. You know what I'm saying? And, and I was fortunate. Too. No, yeah, and I'm fortunate that uh, for me, like, education, like, helped me, like, being involved in higher education. Like, you know, I, I'm living at the fucking dorm. You're living in the yeah, dorm right I'm now? living in a dorm, you know? And <laughs> I remember my first, my, my, my first day of school, uh, about two weeks after I got out, because I got sick when I first got out. Like for fir my first week, I'm like throwing up, I had diarrhea. I mean, everybody's feeding me everywhere I go. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I go to the second week of school and, uh, you know, the, all my professors are like, uh, you got to introduce yourself. And I'm having to tell everybody like, yeah, I just joined you guys mid semester and like, I'm formerly incarcerated. You know, I'm not I'm looking a lot older than everybody else, you know, but, uh, you know, I go to Cal State LA, so it's predominantly Latino. A lot of those people grew up in that area or, had, or know somebody that's incarcerated. So most of those people welcomed me. They, they made me feel, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I felt good there. And, um, 
you know, uh, I remember thinking the first time I, I, I'm walking on campus and I see this painting on the wall and it has Diego Rivera and, and Frida and uh, and I'm like, damn, and all these people like from the Mexican Revolution, right? And, and I'm looking at it and I'm going down the stairway and I'm like, like, damn, I should have done this 20 years ago. <laughs> you yeah. know, here I am, 40 something years old, but nonetheless, it's like never too late. Brother, I love everything you're saying right now and I love your 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 just outlook your 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 fucking newly found like just inspiration in life and and what you're doing is just absolutely amazing because not everybody gets uh this second third fourth fifth chance whatever you want to call it you know and and you really are what do you think about the ARC program so um to each their own right i'm going to say that right uh, because me, they, enter, they entertain the a lot of bullshit. Is that what you're saying? So, so this is my thing. Um, I'm not too quick to get involved with people because we got so many organizations out here and resources, right? And so for a lot of people, it's the funding. Like they find a way to receive funding. Like, like we want members. Yeah. Right? And, and, and they're getting written out this big ass check and then return to like, here, attend this class and we'll, we'll give you a couple of dollars. You know, some crumbs. Yeah. And um, you know what, man? It's like I get it. Some people, if they need the resources that are offered, they're cool. That's them. But I'm like very selective in who I associate myself with. Like, it's got to be somebody that I really believe, like in their mission. You know what I'm saying? And 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 it's got to be with the right people, with the right cause. And um, you know, one time I had to go to that office over there, and somebody introduced me to somebody. And they're like, hey, here's this dude. And I look at that dude and I step back and I go, you're so-and-so. Because I used to be. Yeah, I know that. You know, because he's no longer no good. Whatever, right? Uh, so for me, it's like, you know, they're harboring certain individuals. That's how I feel, right? It's like um, they're giving their own, uh, they're, 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 they're giving themselves these titles of like credible messengers. Right? They're like, okay, we, we have these people that are working in the community. And this is my issue with it. And I'm going to be straight up. Because we went through prison and, we, and, 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 you know, we maintained ourselves, conducted ourselves a certain way. We kept our integrity. And I'm not cool with uh, 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 these dudes uh, coming out here and, and giving this fake ass story of like, I went over there because I wanted to change my life. No, you went over there because you're a bitch. Straight up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's a fact, right? <laughs> Let's go, baby. So, so, Let's go. So, so, so. There's no excuses. Like, you could better yourself and you could work on yourself on a GP yard. And that's the fact, right? Amen. So so when I come over there and, and I'm just like, you know, like, you guys will just take anybody and I'm not okay with rubbing elbows and, and working with people. Like, I don't need your shit. You can do it on your own. Exactly. And and, there, and we got a network of people that's like, they didn't have to do that. You know, and I'm out here doing something positive. I'm over here being invited to talk to kids at school. I went to camp. Paid uh, Afro ball the other day to talk to the little homies in there. You know what I'm saying? I got credibility because I be because uh, I belong to that community. Because you kept your head up, brother. Exactly. You stood on solid and, grounds. And, and these dudes are going to, and, and I say they're phony because they're going around and they want to be the poster child for these organizations. They don't got credibility, and this is why I say this because in order for you to be a credible message, you need to belong to that community. And when you turn your back on that community, you no longer have that right to speak on it. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's the truth. 100%. 100%. You know, 100%. They're, they're, they're not revealing to the people that are speaking to that they PC'd up, that they were a bitch in prison. You know what I'm saying? So, so um, they're, they're spitting a different narrative yeah, to these so, kids. Yeah, so, so, so um, you know, whoever, like, I don't, uh, first of all, I don't fucking follow celebrities. I don't give a fuck what you produce, what movie, or none of that shit titles and, and what you do like that don't mean shit to me what matters to me is people like regular people you know what I'm saying good so, people so, no yeah exactly yeah who do you want sitting yeah. at your dinner table bro <laughs> real people yeah good you know people saying? brother yeah good people I don't uh, want I don't give a fuck bro this is this this sucks to say it dog but this is how I started hood stocks from the beginning and anybody that talks to me on the phone before a fucking podcast Homie, check it out. It's just got to be on the up and up. It's got to be straight, dog. I had a dude one time, this homie, this homie uh, hooked me up with, and he's a homie, bro, but he never been in the system. Mm -hmm. He's a boxer, bro, and he used to rap, and, you know, he's uh, he's from South Central. I won't say what neighborhood, 
But um, you know, he's a good dude on the streets, yeah. bro. But you know, it, you know, some, but some cats don't under, They don't experience the inside life and understand all of the politics that's involved in regards to like. You know, just being a stand-up dude, integrity, all the above, you know. But he goes, hey, Lux, I got somebody that's actually in the system right now. And um, and I think he, he's putting out a book right now. And he used to be fucking Golden Gloves champion and all this other shit. And I was like, all right, bro, have him holler at me. So the dude hollered at me from inside. And the first thing I got to ask him is, hey, my G, where you at, dog? And so yeah. he ended up being on a 50-50 yard, bro. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? He goes, but it's a 50 50 yard, blah, 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 whoop. And he tried to run this game on me like I don't know what time it is, yeah. you know? And I said, my G, check it out, bro. And this is now I'm I'm talking to the homies, homie. And, he, you know, he really doesn't know better because he does. he's never been to the system. And, or, you know, I don't know, bro. You know, maybe I'm cutting him too much slack. Who knows? But uh, I said, hey, my G, check it out. You are on this yard. Why are you on this yard? Hey, well, you know, blah, 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 whoop, whoop, and, uh, and the other, right? Yeah. And I said, check it out, homie. What I'm doing right here at Hoodstocks is not going to really align with what you're doing and where you're at right now. Because once you tell people that you're on a 50-50 yard, which they will ask, bro, then it's going to turn into a negative situation. And whatever book you're writing, bro, they can give two fucks about. Oh, exactly. You know, because I know who my audience is because my audience is me. Yeah. You know, my audience is these dudes talking shit to me right now on the podcast for this, that, and the other. You know what I mean? They, 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 they you know, they, they, they gonna tell it how it is. And, and so I said, hey, I wish you best of luck. And you know, I'm just trying to keep it respectful because mm -hmm. this, that, you know. And I'm not a fucking self no. soldier. I'm not gonna be wolfing no, on this exactly. dude over, over the, the phone, phone. Yeah. over the phone, dog. I and I just it. said, hey, homie, this is what we're doing right here, and what you're doing, or how you doing your timer now is not going to align with what this podcast is about. And it's, it's, and this podcast is about giving light to solid individuals, brother, you know, Spence out doggy, because at the end of the day, you know what, when I walk out to my car, I got to walk out to my car. Yeah. When I'm out on the, on the public with the streets with my family, bro, I'm out there by myself with my family in the streets. I mean, I've maintained my head above water through a lot of fucking, through a lot of different waves in the ocean. And somehow, some way, I was fortunate and one of the ones to survive some of this shit, you know? And and you know what? I'm not going to wreck it or jeopardize my family over putting somebody on that it may have a good story. But you know what? He didn't, he, he, for some reason, he had a, he had a hard time maintaining his foundation within the system and he kind of went out backwards for whatever reason. I mean, I can't make that a part of my legacy. Fuck no. I can't sit across from the dude or have the dude on the phone and, and do that. No, bro, because that's not what I represent and that's not what I'm about. My, what I'm about is giving light to solid homies, white dudes, black dudes, Asian dudes, oh. anybody that, that was able to maintain, keep their head above water, I give them a platform. You know what I mean? Like, bro, there's so many channels that will give a piece of shit motherfuckers platforms. And oh. sometimes the politics are crazy and you get to short end of the stick. I get it, dog. But, hey, it is what it is, you know? Shit happens, and, I, and I'm sorry that that happened to you. If, if you were in the right and motherfucking shit got pushed on you, from haters or whatever, favoritism made the politics. Choice, man. I mean, it is what it is, yeah. right? You yeah. know? Um, but anyways, I don't know how I went off in that little fucking <laughs> tangent right there. But I, I you know, I mean that's I've maintained that from the beginning, brother. Yeah. You know, I mean of giving giving good homies a, a platform to share their story. And you know what? I get a lot of good feedback. I don't give a fuck from CEOs, from fucking who does, from lawyers. From public defenders, homie, all that information trickles down to me. If they don't, re if seals don't reach out to me, they're hey, like, hey, look, we love what the fuck you're doing, you know, we love what you're doing, like you, you know, you're maintaining, you know, because you know it aligns with the, uh, the, the your story is a part of a lot of these other stories, yeah. these other people's stories. If they're a public defender, if they're a DA, if they're a fucking CEO, like I mean, CEOs don't like, bro. There was a CEO that fucking they wanted to come on a podcast and snitch out all the CEOs. You know, yeah. and I was like, ah, I don't know about that shit, dog. You know what I mean? You know, I don't know if I'm good to have a CEO nah. that's a snitch. Nah. You know what I mean? I don't even want to have a CEO that's a snitch on here, bro. No, nah, yeah. Because he was like, hey, I'm gonna expose the whole system, fuck all this shit. That's your and, problem, I, and I was like, that's a little messy for yeah. me, bro. That's not a part of the. I ain't, I ain't a. You know what I mean? Like, bro, like, you know, because I have, you know, there's there's good CEOs too, bro. 
then look out for the homies. And there's piece of shit motherfuckers. You know, I mean, let's be yeah. real about it. I mean, no, no, nobody glorifies that person. Like they say, like, you know, everybody watches these gangster movies, right? And nobody likes that snitch in that movie, bro. Never. You know what I'm saying? Never. Uh -huh. Never. I we mean, like, how many we like times? that gangster. Yeah. I mean, uh, people always love, like, look at all the uh, uh, casino, all the Italian movies, Godfather, bro. Motherfuckers love that shit, dog. Uh -huh. And they're glorifying. Why are these the best movies in the world, bro? Scarface, you know, all this uh -huh. shit. Because these motherfuckers are gangsters and they fucking had, they stood by their fucking nuts, yeah. dog, you know what I mean? And they went out with a fucking bang or, or they stayed solid. Motherfuckers love them dudes. Bro, how many people are writing movies about snitches and glorifying snitches where people are going to be watching the movie and rooting for the snitch? Not one. Yeah. It's not going <coughs> to sell. Not one, dog. You know what I mean? So it doesn't matter if you're a, it doesn't matter if you're a police officer, if you're a correctional officer, if you're a gang member, bro. At the end of the day, none of them organizations like snitches, bro. Whistleblowers. Like, Whistleblowers. Even, even with the incorporation. It's like, come on. Yeah, 100%. So... <clears throat> you get out, you get into Cal State. You got the Cal State LA fucking uh, wow. sweatshirt on right now. Wow. The, you're living in the fucking dorms, you I'm fucking like animal. like a 20 year old right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How is that, you know? bro? How is that? Like, I mean, do I you love got it. You know what? I, I love it. You know, I walk around and it's interesting because, like, nobody knows your background, you know what I'm saying? Until they get to know you and shit. I'm, I'm showing up to these classes. I'm like way older than most of the people there, right? Because a lot of these kids are like 19, 20, you know, their 20s. And it's like in the evening classes, you got more older, uh, older crowd, right? So some of our classes are in the evenings. And I like, I like sitting in the front. I like sitting in the front. I like raising my hand. I like participating in the discussions and the lectures and all that shit. And, um, you know, I, I never imagined like, damn, uh, I was serving life. And here I am enjoying like, I got the privilege, because it's a privilege, because not everybody has access to higher education, right? And I understand that. And so it's a privilege to just be, like, experiencing this, and, and I'm, I'm loving it. Absolutely, brother. And so uh, 11 months out, I mean, you have a lady now. Yeah. You have a lady now. And I and I didn't know, bro, but when I was talking to her uh, uh, in, in the middle of a pee break that we were doing, yeah. She's out from 12 years, bro. Yeah. 12 years in the pri I mean, damn, bro. That's a crazy relationship, bro. No, and, it, and it's like, you know, <laughs> it's hard for somebody that, you know, didn't come from the lifestyle or never experienced, like, being incarcerated. Like, it's hard. Like, it, it, and it's just like meeting her. Like, we, we started off as friends on campus. Oh, so you met her on campus. Yeah, she's also a student studying. Like, she's going to go into law school. She run. She works full time, student full time. Has her own business on the side, right? So, um, you know, but she also comes from the lifestyle and, and she experienced incarceration. And so you have something uh, in common. In common, yeah. You have something in common. I mean, I don't want to sound like a weirdo, but that probably that sex probably hit different, huh? <laughs> Two parolees <laughs> <laughs> Fucking like it's the first time out <laughs> I apologize so much about this guys But I say with all due respect dog But there's like we say we always find I always find a comedic value Yeah, no, you got and, humor. yeah in all yeah. situations and, and to me this it's a little bit of funny you know But, um, and, and no, so, but you're right there's, some, there's actually some truth to that it's Like you know somebody has been de deprived you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, it's going to be a little different. I hate to be your neighbors, dog. I'll be like, there they go again. <laughs> pop, 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 pop. You know what I mean? Like, damn. You know I mean? That's that proly life right there. <laughs> yeah. That shit is so dope, bro. And, and just you two coming together. And I want to have her on, too, if it's good with you. She asked yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, she said she's it, willing she, to, like, I'm... Well, she I'm said, right. she said, did you interview females? I said, fuck yeah, dude. She, goes, right. I, she goes, I just got out from 12 years. And I said, shit, two weeks, two yeah. weeks, two weeks, my G. You know what That's mean? right. Um, let's, let's do this, brother. Uh, let's do it. Let's open up the phone line, guys. I know you guys want the phone line. And I know there's uh, certain things that we haven't touched upon yet, but we will touch upon it amongst these phone calls right here. Let's get the phone line real quick, guys. Um... Uh, let's go right here. Thank you, Doug.
No people got questions, and if you don't, then we just continue our conversation. That's easy. <laughs> okay, there we go. Fun line's up. You guys want to call in, talk to the homie Happy right here. Surviving Lucky. <laughs> you guys, oh, the homie got the handle, Hoodstock's Table. These motherfuckers are just savages right here. Lucky Letterman. Yes, sir, guys. That's a compliment, man. I take that. I miss you, Lucky. I miss you, too. Oh, you got a fucking... You guys are fucking animals, dog. You guys are quick on the wit right here, man. And I love that shit because I'm the same way, too. Um, So... You have accomplished... What have you accomplished within these 11 months out? Man, homie, like, oh... Damn. It's, it, I, I can't even explain it, right? But, uh... You know, I'm 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 happy with things the way things have been going. Um, you know, have just being able to like call my mom, call my family, uh, call the homies, like you know, I could come around and you know, I'm embraced, I'm loved. Uh, you know, I have a, a big support network, even at school, right? Uh the the main director the director from uh, the, the the Center for Engagement you know, it's from the very first moment that I got out, like she oversaw the program in prison. So I had this relationship with her and that's all. Uh, you know, there is, they've gone out of their way to help me, right? So make sure that I'm good. I, you know, I don't have to worry about like rent and stuff, like where I'm gonna live. I went to a transitional housing for six months. But um, in the meantime, like, you know, during these 11 months, uh, I got to attend, you know, conferences at colleges where I network with other homies that are all sweat, you know, uh, part of uh, the CSU system or the US uh, UC system at other schools or even the community college systems and just you know it's nice to be uh, seeing one another out here you know a lot of more former lifers and, and see that we understand the value of education and, and knowing that what it's going to do for us right that's going to allow us to you know be in certain spaces where we can make positive changes right so uh it's it's a good feeling, man. It's a good feeling. I you know I attended conferences. Uh, I went to Sacramento. I had an opportunity to go to Sacramento with the California United against solitary confinement, and lobby for a bill. Attend a rally. I'm here speaking to, you know, senators or their staff about you know my experiences in solitary confinement, you know, and asking them to uh, support this bill. Right. It was called a Mandela California Mandela, and so. For me, it's like here I am taking pictures in front of the Capitol and having these meetings one day from the next. And and honestly, like these are all the things that I said I was gonna do when I get out. You know, I told myself like, you know, I'm gonna like like the degree don't mean shit, like the piece of paper, right? But it's like what you what are you gonna do with it? And for me, it's always been like, uh, if I could do anything to prevent from people that are experiencing like what I experienced it, you know, like 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 I look back and I, and I see like how many like how many times along the way I could have gotten the help as a kid. I was like, okay, he's just angry. He's, uh, uh, you know, he, 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 he's going through something, right? Let's ask him questions. Let, let's try to figure out, but no, but their solution was like, let's kick him out of school. My, my principal in elementary school told me that I was going to end up in prison. That was their expectations of me, you know? Why do principals do this? Yeah, I don't so know. that was the principal. Like, that's what she told me. Yeah. Right? So that was their expectations of me. So, you know, um, you know, it made me feel like I didn't belong in school. Like, even on sports teams, like, even in the neighborhood, like, certain parents, like, oh, I don't want you hanging around with that guy because he's a troll maker. So, yeah, it, it's easy to understand, like, why I gravitated towards those other individuals that were also troll makers and why I found belonging amongst the homies. You know what I'm saying? And that's where I found importance. Like, okay, they praised me all, for all that behavior. So, I understand, like, 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 like ac academia, like, going to school, um, you know, it, it makes you look at things a little different, right? And so you understand, like, okay, it's not that simple. And, and, and it's like, um, you know, I'm going to do whatever it takes and, and anything that I can. I'm going to use this knowledge to make to make these certain changes in my neighborhood and make sure that uh, other kids aren't treated like this and, and they receive, like, the, the best opportunities to, like, succeed. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. And, and you know what? Uh I believe homies like yourself that are out right now, um, you guys are doing, uh, you're doing your part. You're paying it forward. You know, you you were uh, granted parole, freedom, another chance in life to get it right, even if it was 20 years later. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, much, how, how crazy is that, bro? All, 
all your your entire prime, and I, I would say you're still in your prime right now, um, but in in regular normalized society, uh, you know, we, people are at uh, certain different points in their life at your age after coming out from 22 years in comparison, right? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, like how how crazy is that that you missed all those years and you're out now, like. You know, and I know every day it probably, like, you just look up at the sky and, like you said, you can go to the refrigerator and do what you want and how you want to do it without a CO telling you what to do. I mean, how how crazy is that, bro? It's just, it's it's such a... Uh, you know what? And, and, and I'm uh, really grateful, right? I, I live life, like, feeling like... Even when I was in prison, I was still grateful because I was alive. Right, so even what a life sense, I'm like, I, I'm waking up every morning and I'm breathing, I'm alive. So I was grateful in prison. I always maintain that attitude. When I got out here, I know that, um, you know, uh, n n you know, nothing is uh, is owed to me. You know what I'm saying? Nobody has to give me shit. And everything that people do for me and they help me out, like, you know, I'm grateful for that. And you gotta, and you gotta, and you gotta make. Sh Let's get this phone call right here, bro, because we can go on about this conversation. Right. Let's get this phone call right here. Hey, you're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. Hi, Lucky. Hope you're doing well. Who's this? Denise from Orange County. Denise, how you doing? How you doing? And, thank, and I am I'm doing good. well. Thank you for calling in. What would you like to talk to Eddie about? Or ask um, him? I first of all, I wanted to ask him. Um, okay, so from the time he what to the parole board and he was waiting for the governor to answer um, when he got that when he got that answer between that time and the release date um, did he ever have to raise his hand for anything or deny anything no and, and here's the thing like you know <laughs> I, I think if a lot of that. no yeah I can answer it and, and, and I think a lot of people get this misconception and thinking like um, like the homie's gonna approach you and ask you to do some shit. Like, like, like. And here's the thing: like, if somebody's truly your homie, right? Um, and and especially if like you don't always like everything that's expected of you, you're gonna be given that respect, right? And, and it's like there, there's so many other people that like are willing to like. I was that person. Like, hey, like, you need something? Like, let me know. I, I'll take care of it, right? So there's no shortage of, of, of people to do shit. Right, okay. and it's certainly like people are always in a respect. Respect, like you know, it's like that's the homie. He's going right. home. That's right, and that's what we want to see. Like we support one another, and so um, yeah, that was never a thought. Like that, that was never ever a concern for me. And I remember okay. like uh, some uh, uh, one of my bosses at work saying like, "Hey, you told people you're going home." Like, yeah, I'm not worried about that. Like the homies want to see me go home. Yeah. Okay. So, cause you always well. From my family, I always heard like, you know, guys are hating in there and they want, to, you know, just to keep you from going home. No, yeah, and, and I and I think that's like, um, some people like I don't know if it's TV or or, or, or like like you know stories uh, uh, uh from people that really haven't been there. But I'm gonna tell you this, like, from my experience, like, um, like most times that things happen is because an individual puts itself out there. You know what I'm saying? Like 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 ain't nobody gonna really force you to do shit. But if you put yeah. yourself out there and you act like a badass, and all right, we we'll, we'll try mm -hmm. that out, right? But but it, it, there comes a certain point where like, um, you know, it's almost like a like a like an unset rule, like when somebody's going to board, and if they're granted parole, like, you mm -hmm. know, and the homie's a stand up dude, like, like anyways, but like let let him go on his way, you know, let let him okay. like, congratulations, and, and ain't nobody like gonna gonna mess with you or or, or anything like that, so. Uh, you know, there's going to be people hating on you, perhaps, you know, that that, that, that feel like, oh, that, that motherfucker's getting laid out or whatever, you know? They're miserable motherfuckers, right. but it's like, for the most part, you don't have to worry about it. So if you have a family member that's going through that or whatever, like, you don't have mm -hmm. to worry about that. Believe it, like, 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 we're all about seeing people go home. Okay. And what would you say, I have another question, what would you say um, things have changed in there being from when you first got locked up to, like, when you got out like so in there, there changed in there yeah and, and so i think the culture changed a little bit and then like when i first went in there it was like it was more violent uh prison was more violent like the reality was you weren't gonna get out if you're gonna get if you had life 
And so now it's just like, you know, these opportunities are like we're provided these for, uh, programs that uh, are mandated by board. And I, now we actually have access to it. Like, oh, cool. Let, let, let's do that. Um, the violence is, 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 is not as violent as before. I mean, there's still things that are occurring. When things need to happen, they're going to happen. Right. Yeah. But uh, uh, for the most part, it's like I tell people, like, you know what? Uh, your experience in prison is what you make of it. If you want to have a hard time and you want to make it hard for yourself, that's what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? But other and did than you that, have to do a, um, uh -huh. sorry, I didn't mean to Go ahead. Did you have to do a class like uh, how to be in out of here in society? Did you have to do a class? So I took several classes because every time you're denied at board, um, when after they deliberate and they tell you like, hey, you're denied, and this is what we uh, feel our areas you still need to work on, right? They'll tell you like, you know, you need to gain insight about gangs. Or about uh, anger management. We want you to take anger management guy, or substance abuse. So they'll tell you these mm -hmm. things like, before you come back, like make sure you take care of these things. And so uh, a lot of times now, especially now, they're offered on the yard, and you just be like, all right, and they're gonna have a waiting list. But um, you know, when you really want to get in there, those classes, you're gonna get in there, and you're gonna make sure that you get them done. And it's like they're easy. They're they're, they're simple. Like, like twelve week classes, three months classes, whatever. Even if it takes a year. You're going to do it because that's a little to ask for in exchange for your freedom, right? So um, right. these classes are there. Um, yeah, the, the, the board usually uh, mandates you to take certain classes. And as long as, like, this is why I tell the homies, like, do those fucking classes. Do extra ones. So that mm -hmm. when you go to board, there is nothing that they could say like, oh, well, you didn't do this. There's no reason that they could deny you for it. At least, uh, at least for that on your part, you know, that you haven't done anything. Right. So, so you think you were denied? Last question. I'm sorry. So do you think you were denied um, previous years because you weren't doing any of that? So the first time I didn't have one class under my belt, right? I was a shoot kick out. I was fuck up, fucking up, even my second time. Both times I went with write-ups. Um, but at the same time, there were several things that played a factor. Like at that time, they weren't paroling us anyway, so it, it didn't matter. And it wasn't until like rec more, more recently in the recent years that they started uh, uh, paroling us. And, and that parole process kind of changed where like um, they have a burden to like, show evidence like okay you're still participating in shit you know so so um you know they usually ask for like for you to be like five years clean whatever write up and you do that the minimum you stay five years clean you take the classes um and you know you have a very good possibility of, of getting granted parole right on well i bless you and i wish you all the success you know thank you here. thank you Denise. thank you i appreciate all right. it all right okay next, next phone call you're on hood stocks talk to us What's up? What's up? What's up, Lux? It's the motherfucking Travi, doggy. Travi, you was so making, oh making, you were making the man wishes hey, today. Hey, I got a question for the guest. Go yeah, ahead. You what's up, my, You missed my man wish, my boy. Hey, hey, what's up, Eddie? What's up, my boy? This is Travi from that uptown with your bar locals, doggy. All right, what's up, homie? Hey, I got a question for you, dog. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, hey, have you ever looked into the union? Uh, as far as, like, for construction and shit? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, you know what? I, I, I'm open to everything, homie. Like, here's the thing is that I got out, like, halfway through my BA degree, right? And it's for me, yeah. it's like I told myself, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish what I started, right? So so, yeah. so uh, I'm finishing them class. I'll be done at the end of this year. I'm going to graduate with a, with a BA, communications, a minor yeah. psychology, right? Um, but if I can you have really a part-time job, so yeah, exactly, homie. And it's like, 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 like for right now, school's priority for me, homie, right? Because I just, you know, I, I, I've been on this since 2015 and, uh, but, uh, uh, what I'm saying is like, <laughs> yeah, even though I go to school, like I do need a damn job. I'm gonna tell you that. Like okay. I do. Okay. I, mean, huh. I, I don't want to cut you off, homie, because fucking... I didn't do as much time as you. I've been in and out of the motherfucking Alley County Jail, Superman, whatever, fucking the pen. I paroled from Lancaster a long ass time, a thousand fucking two. But um, I got into the union later on. I, uh, I believe it was 2011. Uh, shout out to my carnal rascal from the hood, from Wither Water Locals. I know rascal. Um, but, oh, yeah, yeah, that's my carnal. I know, I know you know rascal. Hey, you know my primo rest of peace from Compton? Yeah, youngster. Youngster, homie. I know yeah. he is. He died in front of my tia's pad, fool. That was the only, that, that one death. Angelic. Fucking, hey, hey, my boy, Cerro, that one death, I was, I was 17, he was 16 when that happened, my boy. And God damn, that, that death fucking just, 
Man, uh, we had the funeral right there at Rolling Heights. We used to always go to Rolling Heights, my boy. No, I know, I know, I know your family. I know yeah. Rudy. Uh, yeah, Rudy, little Orejas. Oh. He, yeah. Richard, that's, yeah, my, that's my, a primo. Be, my other brother's for Pico Nuevo. My tia, actually, I think we still stay out there, but I, I don't know. But, um, nah, homie, fucking, uh, yeah, dog. Hey, dog, look, I'm going to just let you know some knowledge I, I might be having. I ain't done as much as time as you have, but I'm a solid only too. Fuck a PC on mine. But, hey, look, dog, fuck it. I got it to the union phone that changed my life. Changed my life, dog. I mean, out here on the calles, I mean, yeah, you fucking start from the bottom, you're an apprentice. And sometimes, like, for homies like us, like, yeah, fucking, if some of these fucking journeymen talk to you a certain way, but, hey, you got to take it. No, so I get it, homie. For that, if you ever take take that route, homie, if God. you ever take that route to go in constructionals, it, it, it there's it's a roughneck job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, but, if you got uh, any hookups, homie, let me know. Boy. IBW uh, like eleven. Uh, has yeah. A lot of uh, 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 ex-lifers. Uh, no, yeah, homie. Hey, I'm, hey, I'm, hey, I'm, hey, I got another question for you. This what's is, up, hey, homie? Lucky, listen up. Listen up, Lucky. Hey, hey, when's when's the first time you uh, you ate a manwich? <laughs> the first time I ate a manwich. Yeah, when's the first time my boy said <laughs> I know when was the first time I ate a man. Which was my, my homeboy local came back from the county. And he came back okay. with like, he he and thought he had something special. Yeah, I was in 2007. And I already okay. been down since right. 2001. And he came back All like, right. hey, fool, I'm going right. to show you something that I learned in the county. And like, he acted like it was something real special. And it <laughs> was at that moment, yeah. right? But I was like, yeah, and then yeah, we yeah, couldn't yeah, stop yeah, making yeah. them for so long, like after that. Okay, look, check uh. this out. I, I, it was 2008 when I had went back to the county and I hit Superman and I was hungry as fuck <laughs> and the homie introduced me to a manwich dog yeah. after that fucking hey look, look I, I named my I named my manwich today I did one at Aleon yeah. Lucky knows about it yeah. and I call it the Lucky's way why? Yeah. because Lucky <laughs> kept it. hey the last time the last time they had a fucking manwich competition right there at, at who's box? They fucked it I up. I was like, God damn. They got the wrong motherfuckers there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, and they all, and they all felt like hey, they were the right motherfuckers. Yeah. Lucky got a picture. Lucky that picture I shot you, and I don't know if you got that email with the video. Send me the email again, but, man. Or if you got it, just send it to my to my shit, dog. I mean, to my, my, my phone number. You got my number, dog. You know, we've yeah, been, I'm not, you on, know, that, I'm not on that. I'm not on the uh, on the Instagram and all that. But you know what? Hey, Cause, dog. Because your hymen hey. be tripping, fool. That's why, dog. Uh, nah, you know what though? Yeah, honestly, I look. I, she comes before anything. That's, That's why right, I'm still out now. Look, <laughs> straight You're up, smart man. That's she why I'm still out now. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Hey, bro, you gotta love it, dog. When motherfucker keep it real, dog. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. why I'm still out now, bro. I mean, but That's I'm still right. right. Hey, dog. Hey, hey, happy on. Shout out to Rascal from that Wooded Water Locals, Little Rascal. Hey, dog. Hey, 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 happy. I, I actually listened to this podcast, homie. And, uh, damn, homie. What you used to, homie? Hey, dog, fuckers, they coming out real like that, dog. I like that. That's right, homie, boy. So, one time for your mind, dog. All right, all right, hey, Lux. All right, doggy. All right, brother. Hey, post that video, though. I'm going to post it. Send it to me again. I got the pictures. Hey, this fool had, he had all the right ingredients. And I, and I told the homies when they were here, I said, simple is the best way to win yeah, this conversation. Lying. Yeah, but hey, and, Lucky, and they fucked hey, it up. Dog, yeah. how, how happy the ingredients I had in my shit, only. I'll show them the drink, picture, dog. Drink <laughs> these things like that since the last time you ordered for walking horse. <laughs> Come on now. Lucky. You're absolutely right, bro. That shit real, homie. Yeah, 100%, Look at dog. Their ingredients one more time. Well, you All know right, what, dog? dog? When I seen the ingredients, so he, he sent me a picture. He's on lunch break on his construction job, and obviously they in the parking lot or wherever they parked at, bro. Right there. No, and and, and they, there was there was oh, a tailgate down, yeah. And and they they he sent me a picture of all the ingredients, and it was all the right ingredients, bro. Yeah. It was simple, bro. It wasn't yeah. too much. They didn't have no motherfucking Chinese sweet it and sour was, sauce. Yeah. That was a fucking twenty dollar sandwich, bro. Yeah, it was good, brother. It was so good. Geez, it was the hop. I, I, I don't yeah. want to put my ingredients out there. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, right, right, you know, you know what we gonna do? We're gonna get you on the next man with competition, though. <laughs> there you go. And I already know yeah. who you're gonna. I, I already know who you're gonna. I'm gonna have against. to try one of those out, man. Yeah, 100. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, brother. Hey, all right, homeboy. All right, that's just huh? All right, my boy. Yeah. Hey, Wolfie, what's up, baby? What's up, Lucky? It's Wolf, homie from Monte. Yeah. What's up, homeboy? What's up, Happy? Hey, welcome home, dog. Gracias. 
you know what, bit all your um your whole uh, explanation and what how you probably call this journey your the whole interview dog is fucking dope, dog. Hey gracias, I appreciate that, homie. And um I I just wish you the best dog. And, um you know, we're we're real close to the page. I mean I'm on that four five you said be two, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean welcome to that journey dog because I fucked up my career and I'm back, I'm back on that job one. And I wish you the best, boss, because it's, it's, it's a struggle, and I just wish you the best. All right, man. I appreciate that. All right, Wolfie. Be you know easy, I mean? brother. You I sound just, like you you're going through some things right now, bro. You know what I mean? You're starting to bring us down in here, dog. So we got to hang up on you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Wolfie. <laughs> Bye to Wolfie and his fucking problems. I mean, bro, he was bringing me down. I started getting depressed right now, dog. I was like, shit, dog. Um, no, nah, shout out to my boy, Wolfie. How do I, how do I, uh, how do I get online? Let's, I'll call you right now. You sent me text messages right now. Let's, let's give the call. This is just trying to holler at you, dog. We don't know who it's going to be. What up, doggy? You're live what's on, up, homie? You're live on Hood Stocks. Hey, what's up? What's up, Big Lux? What's up, Big Eddie? You know who this is? Who, that voice sounds familiar. Who is this? It's me, David. Oh, what's up, homeboy? How yeah, you doing, you homie? Good? East Lake? Yeah. Yeah, what's up, homie? Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm right here uh, chilling with the homie. All right, all right. I just wanted to say my... And just let you know to keep doing the thing, you know. Just keep on doing the the, the hard work out there, you know. We, we it was a it was a fight to get out, but we're, we're out here now, you know. That's right, homie. And I appreciate All that. Right, man. Gracias, right, Thank you for calling, homie. Yeah, just to support you and, and, and the homie loves for Mud Sucks. Thank you, brother. Appreciate. Thank it. you. We appreciate that, homie. Absolutely. And likewise, right. we support you. All right. All right. Take care. All right, Thanks, homeboy. Sir. So so now let's, let's enough with the callers right now. Um, where you're at right now in your life? Where are you going? So I'm taking. You know what, man? I'm taking four courses right now. Uh, working part time. Where you know, at? Where you working? At, at the school. At, at the, the school. office. And it, it is, uh, you know, we serve a lot of the population that are formerly incarcerated. Um, you know, for me, it's like people coming home and, and that are attending school and stuff like that, like, I extend that hand. You know what I'm saying? It's like, l l let me show you, like, I'm, I've got, I've been out here a few months, I've gotten familiar with the process. You need to go to a financial aid office, you need to go to your student services for whatever, you need to uh, select your classes or whatever the hell it is, right? Um, that's, that's who I am, man. I, I'm like, you know what, I'll, I'll help you out. Even, even people that ain't homies, you know, anybody that shows up, you know, there's old ladies, there's, there's younger people, whoever, it's like, that's just me, like uh, uh, you know, always willing to help somebody if, if I can, if I can, right? And so, um, you know, I'm I'm enjoying uh, being in, in class. Like uh, some people think it's fucking boring or, or stupid, but it's like I actually be enjoy being in class, listening to a fucking lecture, and the professor right then I'm taking notes and it's work. But I enjoy that shit. Absolutely. I enjoy the challenge, and I, and I look at the bigger picture and it's like, you know what, um. Uh, you know, it's going to be good to, to, to have these degrees only because I know that these certain conditions are, are needed in order to gain access to certain spaces. And, it, and it's those spaces that, that, that I want access to to create change. There you go, baby. Let's, let's, let's do a couple more phone calls, bro, because I, the homies are texting me, and these are dudes that call in a lot, dog, and I want to give them uh, uh, access or to, to, to talk to you, bro. They, they really want to talk to you, dog. So let me go right here. This is the homie from Pacas. All right. Yeah. I told him I'm gonna call right now, and now he's gonna. <laughs> and now you don't want to answer. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Let me get this other call. They they they're texting me and they want to holler at you. First time. Uh, wait, hold on. Right here. There it is. Right here. Uh, let's get this phone call. They're calling in right now. Uh, you're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. Yo. Yo, what's up, Lux? What up, doggy? It's Craig. I'm with Veneno from Santana. Hey, Veneno. How you doing, brother? What's up, homie? boy? Cracking. What's up, happy? What's up, homie? Hey, homie, I got a question for you, can I? Yeah, go ahead, homie. Hey, 
Hey, how happy were you, dog, when you got out and you were able to fucking let one out, homie? <laughs> <laughs> hey, those, those, those are things that you dream about, you know? And it's those moments when you're, like, laying back in bed and you're like, like, damn, I used to think about this. And now it's hey. actually happening. And you can't even describe it. You can't put that into words. <laughs> What, yeah, what? Homie, you not, hey, homie, you know, like a fire extinguisher, homie. <laughs> 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 what up, hey, what's up, big old smile, homie? <laughs> you were like this, dog. You feel it like the champ. You know? And hey, he was all trying to hold it, too. He was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, homie. <laughs> you know, some motherfuckers be calling me gay as fuck for asking shit like that. But I think it's just like a common, like... Thing amongst no, the fellas, bro. On. It's like that, 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 that in the food like, you eat. It's if like, you haven't it's, done time, hey homie. If yeah. you haven't done time, then they don't know what it is. Yeah, homie, you know what I mean, about those are lame. It's locker, <laughs> it's, it's locker room talk, bro. You know. Yeah, oh come yeah. on. Those, those are the type of fools that would take showers fucking with their clothes on. Eh? Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? homie. Exactly. <laughs> with the with the boxers on, homie. You know what I mean? Get yeah. out of here, fool. Yeah. Hey, but much love, dog. You hey, know what I mean? You know, you know, tap it in, you know. That's right. Out here, you know. So, Gracias, we appreciate you know, much it. Much love, you know what I mean. And, and lucky, hey, homeboy. Hey, likewise. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, dog. Let's right. get this call. Yeah. They, they saying they related to you right here, dog. Let me see who is that. Yeah, let's get. Let me get this. Oh, hold on. Let me. I'll call him right now. Hey, you're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. Yo, yo. yo. Yes, sir. What's cracking, dog? It's that homie from Pacoima, dog. Hey, I was trying to call you right now, brother, and you <laughs> sent me the email, dog. I saw that dog, but you call it. Hey, you calling your ex bitch, dog? That's not me. <laughs> I might have dialed I'm the just... wrong number. My bad, dog. <laughs> what's up, Happy? Hey, what's up, homie? Who's this? Hey, man, it's it's a homie from Pacoima, dog. I'm 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 happy to see that you're out, even though I don't know you, dog. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, I feel your spirit through the screen, brother. Thank you, homie. Hundred percent. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, dog. Keep doing your thing, man. Represent for the peoples, man. No, thank you, you homie. We we gonna call you the people's champ. That's right. Gracias. Let's go, baby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Appreciate you, brother. We're no, gonna thank get the you, next call. He got some family calling in right now, dog. Spencer, dog. Love you, dog. You pack us in the fucking casa, dog. You don't play with it. Hello. Yeah, yeah. I see you on the text message. I'm returning some of these calls on the text messages. They blowing up. Who do we got on the uh, live right now? Um, that's my cousin, uh, Eddie. Okay. Who's this? Yeah. Who is L- this? Uh, it's Mikey. Oh, what's up, Mikey? What's going on, brother? I just watching the, uh, that's the right. YouTube Thank you, Pima. I appreciate and, it. And, and you, you know, you inspire us and we love you, man. I love you guys too. You know, they've always been for me, uh, there for me, my family, my homeboys, unfortunate. And it's like, you know, I don't take none of that for granted. Like, like I appreciate everybody in my life. You got nah, man, we, we 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 watch it, and even my daughter, my six month daughter, and and it's, <laughs> that's it's, right, primo. It's it's inspiring, you know. And I thank you. I love you. All right. I love you, brother. All right. All right. Next call. You're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Yo, what up, doggy? What's up, yeah, homie? Yo, what's up, man? This, uh, this is uh, hey, primo. This is your little cousin, Aguito. Hey, what's up, Aguito? What's up, man? I'm, you know, coming out here from San Jose, man, the Bay Area, you know. This, mm-hmm. I just wanted to uh, show love to the podcast, man, Hoodstock. You know, having my primo on here, you know. That's right, primo. Uh, talking about his success and his journey, man. Uh, much love, man. And uh, I just want to tell my primo, keep it up, man. I love you, man. We all love you, man. And, uh, yeah, it's just good stuff, man. Keep it up, primo. It's just nothing but positivity, man, motivation, man. You know, but I only hit county, you know, and that's and that's it, man. I ain't even. I got my son and everything, so I got. Man, you you, you set the tone, man. You, you know, you set the motivation. You know, we, we got to be out here for the fam, man, for the rasta, you know. That's right, primo. I love you too. All right. All right, man. I, I'm a, I'm a good going, but yeah, hey, good shit. <laughs> Thank man. you for I'm, calling. I'm still on this. I'm still be on this, man. That's <laughs> right. Me and my pops. Hey, my my dad's spraying the car right now. He's. He, he he just finished clearing the whole car. We still at the body shop right now, you know. Yeah. Our family, that's that's the trade right there. So we still working, man. We were listening to you, man. We put that on the Bluetooth, man. We, hey, all love, man. I all appreciate it. I, I appreciate all the support and love. Gracias, primo. Yes, sir. Your dad Keep as well. Up, primo. All right, Tell my dad I said what's up when you see him. Too. I love him. Yes, sir. I love all him, right. man. Can't wait to see you soon. Okay. That is that, dog. Right, you know what, dog? This has been a great fucking podcast and. 
you know, we, we're, we're deep into this few hours now, and um, I'll be looking forward to having you back to continue to keep us updated on your journey, brother. Well, thank you. you know, I appreciate it. Yeah, and we we just, you know, we're here to support. Uh, you know, Hoodstock's got some uh, connects, dot, a lot of dots in the background, so however we can, you know, this, this, this is uh, a lot of dudes, a lot of homies uh, have come on the podcast, and just being on Hoodstock has created a... Uh, opportunity for them for them that and, and i've seen something like johnny from the wild chings man blowing the fuck up like uh -huh. he was destined for greatness and so many other individuals that have been on here bro it's it's mm -hmm. been such a a positive this outlet has been such a positive moment for a lot of the fellas and um man, i appreciate we're, you guys having me here we're here we're here to stay and we're here to continue our work right here within the community you know spreading love spreading insight spreading hope you know Spreading hope is a, a big thing, you know, and and the only way you can spread hope sometimes is, you know, sharing stories like this, like you like yours, brother, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and it, it, it's it's really uh, it's a uh, it's therapy for a lot of people, you know, and so I just want to thank you, brother, for coming by and blessing us with your story and continue your journey to greatness, brother. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And I appreciate all the viewers, everybody showing love and support. Absolutely. I want everybody to give it up for the homie Happy right here. Eddie, when you see him on the streets, baby, don't play with it. We're out of here, baby. Hoodstocks, doggy. We'll see you in about a week or so. You know what I mean? We got some more good things coming. Um, if you guys, uh, I'm going to put his cash app in the description. And please, you know what I mean? This homie is going to school. He's still working his way up that fucking ladder. The pyramid of life that we live in and any way that you can support him you know what i mean is much appreciated thank you so much we are out of here baby hood stocks baby let's go